Welcome to Fanfiction Audiobook, One Piece Legend of the Star Sea. Chapter 1, Qin Ming, get up quickly, didn't you agree to go fishing with us today? Could it be that you want to be lazy again? A fat man kept banging on the door of Qin Ming's room, making loud thumping sounds. Fatty man, stop knocking, the door will be smashed by you. Qin Ming who was lying on the bed lifted the quilt, got out of bed quickly, and at the same time sighed softly, it has been more than half a year since he came to this world. From the initial resistance to the present helpless acceptance, Qin Ming was very confused about his future. At first, when he heard the children in this village talking about the One Piece King Galdi Roger, Qin Ming thought it was a dream, or that the people here were all pirate fans. Otherwise, when those children talked about One Piece, their innocent eyes were full of obsessive admiration, and there was a hint of madness, as if they were crazy followers, which made Qin Ming feel palpitations. From the mouth of the fisherman who rescued him, Qin Ming learned that he was drifting alone at sea and had fallen into a coma. If he hadn't been discovered by a fisherman who happened to be fishing nearby, he would really have died in the sea. Since then, in order to survive, Qin Ming learned to be a fisherman and kept practicing his fishing skills. Half a year later, he has become a well-known fisherman in this fishing and hunting village. Many people would come to invite Qin Ming to go with them before going fishing, so that they could catch more fish. At first, Qin Ming thought about growing some plants and vegetables in this village, and being a leisurely vegetable farmer. He would just live his life like this, but the land in the village was extremely barren, not to mention growing vegetables, there was not even a single blade of grass. There is no way to survive, so people in the village rely on fishing for a living. For half a year, Qin Ming ate fish for every meal, but he didn't feel much disgusted. Because the fish species in the nearby sea area are extremely rich, every fish he eats every day, even every meal, is different, and the taste is also different, which can be said to be a feast for the taste. After all, when we were on the earth in the past, there were not few fish species, but in this world of one piece, there are many fish that cannot be eaten on the earth. For example, the snowflake fish Qin Ming ate the day before yesterday, after steaming the fish, it was still cold. No matter how heated it was, it was as cold as a popsicle. It's just so cool. It's really unlucky, according to the novel, the main character has gained all kinds of powerful abilities after time travel, why am I still an ordinary person? Qin Ming thought indignantly, and followed the fat man to the beach. Along the way, many villagers greeted Qin Ming kindly, and saw many children playing the game of marine catching pirates there. Today it's my turn to play the great pirate Whitebeard, you play marine ensign and catch me. Idiot, Whitebeard is a super pirate known as the strongest man in the world, how could a small marine ensign dare to catch Whitebeard, at least admiral level is required. Hearing the conversations of those children, the fat man next to Qin Ming suddenly said with emotion, it's nice to be young. I used to be like them. I dreamed of becoming a famous pirate and finding the legendary One Piece. Becoming One Piece, but in the end I gave up. Seeing the fading expression on the fat man's face, Qin Ming thought to himself, you are still the One Piece, at your level as a fat man, you probably got killed by pirates like Buggy the Clown before you entered the Grand Line. Do you know why I gave up? The fat man asked Qin Ming. Why? When Qin Ming asked this, the fat man said with a sad expression, I was ambitious to go out to sea back then, but I was overturned by large sea kings before I sailed far. If I hadn't just happened to be rescued, how can I survive? Hearing what the fat man said, Qin Ming felt very embarrassed. He forgot that in the sea area of this world, large sea kings can be said to be everywhere. With the fat man's level, there is really no need to meet other pirates as single sea kings can overwhelm him. Who saved you, no one in our village can deal with large sea kings. Qin Ming felt a little strange, who saved the fat man? I don't know, it's a very strange old man. According to him, he happened to swim nearby and saved me by the way. Although I think what he said was a bit bragging, how could a person swim from the last island go to the next island? but he is really strong, throwing a small stone casually knocks the huge sea kings unconscious. The fat man's words stunned Qin Ming. Could it be that Pluton Rayleigh was the one who saved the fat man? The old man you mentioned, does he have a scar on his right eye? Qin Ming asked anxiously. Ah, yes, how do you know? The fat man looked at Qin Ming in surprise. I'll just make a random guess. 
Qin Ming wondered why Rayleigh came to East Blue. According to the fat man, he was rescued by Rayleigh a year ago. How could Rayleigh appear in this so-called weakest sea area at that time? According to the people in the village, it has been 22 years since the death of the One Piece King Galdi Roger, that is to say, Luffy should have gone to sea by now, but what did Rayleigh come to East Blue for more than a year ago? As a pirate fan, Qin Ming had watched One Piece many times, but he really didn't remember that there was a plot in it that Rayleigh visited East Blue a year before Luffy went to sea. Could this be Oda's foreshadowing? A ridiculous idea popped up in Qin Ming's mind. Hey, what are you in a daze for? I'm ready to go fishing. After the fat man boarded the fishing boat, seeing Qin Ming still staying where he was thinking, he couldn't help shouting. Qin Ming came back to his senses, and hurriedly boarded the fishing boat, and the busy and fulfilling fishing life began again. After more than two hours, Qin Ming and Fatty looked at today's harvest with satisfaction. There were ten baskets full of fish, enough to eat for a while. The two were very happy in their hearts, and when they were about to go back, there was a huge wave on the sea, which almost didn't overturn their small fishing boat. No, it's Sea Kings. The fat man looked at the giant creature emerging from the bottom of the sea in horror, and was so frightened that he almost wet his pants. Are these the real Sea Kings? Qin Ming looked up at the creature with a horse's muzzle, eyes like lanterns, and a body like an octopus. Judging by its size, it looked like a small bump, at least 20 times bigger than the small fishing boat he was on, times. There shouldn't be sea kings in the sea near here, why does it appear here? The fat man asked Qin Ming with a look of panic. What's the point of asking a fart at this time, hurry up and escape by boat. Qin Ming didn't care about being drenched by the splashing sea water, hurriedly found out the oars, and rowed desperately. At this moment, Qin Ming misses the motor boats on the earth in the past. How can it be so hard to paddle like now, his hands are almost cramped, and he can't sail very far. Ah, the Sea Kings opened its bloody mouth and bit the fishing boat that Qin Ming was in very rudely, obviously wanting to eat them together with the fishing boat. As the big mouth of Sea Kings got closer and closer, Qin Ming smelled the stench emanating from its mouth, and his heart gradually fell into despair. Could it be that this is the end for me? Rubber pistol. When Qin Ming was about to close his eyes and wait to die, he heard a very energetic voice. Most importantly, why did that person's words sound so familiar? Qin Ming suddenly opened his eyes, and saw a long arm flying over his head, followed by a bang, and the huge Sea Kings was blown away. Great, this guy looks delicious. A boy with a straw hat and a small scar under his left eye jumped onto Qin Ming's fishing boat, stretched out his arms to grab the bow, and flew over just like that, looking at the boy who was beaten by him with bright eyes. Sea Kings fainted. Monster, his arms are stretched. When the fat man saw the boy in the straw hat, his face turned green from fright. Wow, there are a lot of fish here, and they all look delicious. The boy in the straw hat soon noticed the fish that Qin Ming and the others had put in the basket, and his mouth was drooling all over the place. Monkey D. Luffy. Qin Ming didn't know what mood he was in right now, he was both excited and nervous. This character he had only seen in cartoons and screens before, now appeared in front of him alive and saved his life. How do you know my name? Did we know each other before? When Luffy heard Qin Ming's words, she turned her head and said in doubt. But you will know my name is not surprising at all, because I am the man who will become the One Piece, ha 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 ha. Before Qin Ming had time to explain, Luffy smiled heartily. His smile was very contagious, especially the self-confidence in him, which was natural and without a trace of affectation. When the fat man heard Luffy's rhetoric, he fainted on the spot after being quite stimulated. Now Qin Ming had nothing to say, he saw Luffy looking greedily at the fish in the basket from time to time, thought for a while, and said, why don't you come back to the village with us, let us treat you to a big meal, I want to repay your kindness for saving my life. Really, this is great, I'm already hungry. Luffy looked delighted. Speaking of this, he seemed to think of something. He ran to the side of the boat and exclaimed, where's my boat? Is that the ship? It has drifted far away. Qin Ming pointed to the lonely floating boat in the distant ocean, and said to Luffy. That's my ship. Luffy looked in the direction Qin Ming pointed, and immediately found that the boat floating far away belonged to him. Earlier, Luffy was focused on saving people, so he didn't stop the boat. 
By the time he realized it, the boat had already drifted away with the current. Come back soon, don't you want to be the ship of the future One Piece? Luffy stood beside the fishing boat and called out to the receding boat. Chin Ming looked at Luffy speechlessly, this guy is really a single-celled creature. This is troublesome. If there is no boat, I can't go to sea. Seeing that there was no way to call the boat back, Luffy said quite distressed. If you don't mind, I can lend you this fishing boat. Chin Ming thought, the future One Piece would go out to sea in my fishing boat, which is really touching. You are really a nice person. As soon as Luffy heard Chin Ming's words, he immediately beamed with joy, and then said to Chin Ming, well, you are also a man, right? Go out to sea with me and become a free pirate on the sea. Faced with the invitation from Luffy, Chin Ming was stunned on the spot. Looking at the current situation, Luffy is still alone, probably not even meeting Zoro. If he really accepted Luffy's invitation, what kind of impact would it have on Luffy, the pirate group in the future? At first Chin Ming was ecstatic when he heard Luffy's words, but soon he calmed down and realized the fact that he is just an ordinary person. To put it bluntly, Chin Ming is now a war scum. Apart from being good at fishing, it can be said that he has no special skills. Randomly encountering an unknown pirate, even if Chin Ming has the courage to fight, he will definitely be the one who gets abused in the end. There is no way, Chin Ming was born in a very ordinary family when he was on earth, after going to school, he became a very ordinary student, and after he came out to work in the society, he became an ordinary office worker. Such an ordinary person with no bright spots, came to this world of One Piece, how to fight against those fierce pirates. If joining Luffy's pirate group will only become a burden, then he will never accept Luffy's invitation, and he might as well stay in this peaceful small village for the rest of his life. So Chin Ming decided to reject Luffy's invitation after pondering for a while. No, I like this village, and I'm used to fishing. If I become a pirate, it will trouble me. When Chin Ming said this, he was somewhat against his will. Why didn't he want to go to sea with Luffy and experience that wonderful and wonderful adventure together? After all, when Chin Ming watched One Piece in the past, he also fantasized about becoming a member of the Luffy Pirates, supporting each other, and singing along the way. Who wouldn't yearn for that kind of selfless trust between partners? But when the fantasy became reality, combined with his own actual situation, Chin Ming had no choice but to make a rational choice against his will. Who likes to be a burden to a team? Fishing. Luffy didn't seem to understand that Chin Ming was rejecting him, his eyes lit up, and he pointed at the fish in the basket on the fishing boat excitedly, so, you caught those fish. Well, sort of. Chin Ming nodded, although Fatty said he went fishing with him, but Fatty was only responsible for putting the fish he caught into baskets. Sure enough, I saw the right person. You are really reliable. We will be partners in the future. Please take care of me. Luffy laughed, showing a bright smile to Chin Ming. Take care of your sister, listen to me carefully, you fool. Chin Ming faintly felt that something was wrong, and he suddenly remembered that it seemed that the person who was invited by Luffy to board the boat, he would not care whether you agreed or not. To put it bluntly, Luffy will slap you in his boat. Just as Chin Ming was about to speak again, he heard a loud murmur. My embarrassment, I really deserve to be a foodie, even the cry when I am hungry is so individual. Chin Ming stared speechlessly at Luffy, who was clutching his stomach and showing a greedy face. Didn't you say that you want to invite me to a big meal? Let's go, we will set sail after we are full. Seeing that Chin Ming was still standing still, Luffy hurriedly urged, and then asked, By the way, what is the specialty of your village? It must be delicious meat. I made a mistake, you have already asked your own questions, and you even asked me a fart. Chin Ming rolled his eyes, told Luffy that the specialty of his village was fish, and was ready to return. Glancing at the fainted fat man, Chin Ming slapped him more than a dozen times in succession, his face was swollen, but the fat man didn't react at all. Under Luffy's repeated urging, Chin Ming had no choice but to row the small fishing boat back. As he rowed, Chin Ming felt something was wrong. After rowing for more than a minute for Mao, the boat not only did not move forward, but instead tended to retreat. Looking at the sea as calm and calm, it shouldn't be. Chin Ming thought about this in his heart, and when he looked back, 
he saw Luffy standing on the other side of the boat stretched out his arms, grabbed the giant sea kings floating on the sea, and held the oar with the other hand in the water. That rowing. You shouldn't ask him to help row the boat, the more you help, the more busy you are. At this moment, Qin Ming really felt that Luffy was not only a foodie, but also a cheat. What are you doing? I want to take it back and use it for a banquet, it's absolutely delicious. Luffy chuckled, and glanced at Sea Kings who was being held by his long arms, almost drooling all over the place. You're holding on to such a lumbering Sea Kings, is there any chance we can row the boat back? Qin Ming was almost driven crazy by Luffy's single cell. The Sea Kings was more than 20 times bigger than this fishing boat, how could this small boat be able to move? Is that so? I thought you were being lazy and didn't row the boat vigorously. It seems that I made a mistake, ha ha ha. Luffy didn't realize that he made a mistake at all, and after making a mistake, he still looked heartless, which made Qin Ming tremble with fear. If I really went out to sea with him, before I saw Zoro and the others, I might have been tricked to death by him without knowing it. No, he will definitely be cheated to death by him. Such an idea came to Qin Ming's mind. That's the only way to do it. Muttering in his mouth, Luffy put down the oar in his hand, and then stretched out his arms, tightly grasping the body of the Sea Kings. Qin Ming originally wanted to tell Luffy to give up the Sea Kings, but before he could say anything, he saw Luffy grabbing the Sea Kings, holding it up high, and throwing the Sea Kings forward with such force. Because the Sea Kings were too heavy, when Luffy stood on the small fishing boat lifted the Sea Kings, the fishing boat shook violently and began to sink. When Luffy threw Sea Kings out, because he was standing on the other side of the boat, the weight of Sea Kings plus the force generated by Luffy's force caused the boat to tilt almost 90 degrees. In other words, the small fishing boat that Qin Ming and Luffy were on almost capsized, which made Qin Ming frightened. What the hell are you trying to do? Qin Ming really went crazy this time. As a normal human being, sometimes he really can't understand the thoughts of single-celled organisms. Take it home and eat it. Luffy pointed at the Sea Kings that he threw in front of the fishing boat, looked at Qin Ming, and said naturally, waste is not good, don't you know? Nima, I think you just want to eat the Sea Kings, don't make yourself so noble. Seeing Luffy swallowing his saliva fiercely, how could Qin Ming not know the true thoughts of this foodie? Knowing that he couldn't persuade Luffy to give up the Sea Kings, Qin Ming had no choice but to let Luffy mess around like this, paddling desperately, just wanting to go back to the village quickly and invite Luffy to have a big meal, and then give this pit god to him, send away. It is no regret to see Luffy in person. Qin Ming really thought so, and wanted to go out on a sea adventure with Luffy. With his fighting power as an ordinary person, 10,000 lives would not be enough to pay. Why did you invite me? Although Qin Ming had already made up his mind not to go to sea, he was still very curious why Luffy would invite him. I think you are a very nice person, and you can fish again. In this way, I don't have to worry about running out of meat in the future. Luffy said very bluntly. Qin Ming was not surprised when he heard Luffy's words. With the thinking of Luffy, a single cell foodie, it is not unusual for him to invite him when he sees that he is good at fishing. I also want to find another chef and musician. In this way, I can listen to music and eat delicious meat every day. It must be a wonderful feeling. Luffy threw the Sea Kings forward again, and Qin Ming, who had gradually become accustomed to the large swing of the fishing boat, did not overreact. If you have a chef, there is no need to look for me. The chef will solve your problem of eating meat. Qin Ming thinks that Luffy will meet Sanji in the future, and he will be redundant on the boat because he only knows how to fish. It seems that the decision not to go to sea with Luffy was a wise choice. As soon as Qin Ming came up with this idea, he heard Luffy who was paddling there say, I have thought about it carefully. It would be the best if the chef can concentrate on cooking meat for me. From now on, the ingredients of meat will be more give it to you. Luffy seemed to get more and more excited as he talked. He looked at Qin Ming with piercing eyes. I ate a Sea King's last time, and its meat was delicious, if only you could catch Sea King's for me to eat more often in the future. Quote. Qin Ming felt cold when he was watched by Luffy and when he heard Luffy's words, his paddling hands trembled, and he almost fell directly from the fishing boat into the sea. If I could hunt sea kings, would I still need you to save them? 
Qin Ming thought of the scene where he and Luffy went out to sea and fought against the huge sea kings every day, and he felt chills all over his body, and a trace of cold sweat flowed from his forehead. Ah, I saw land, is that your village? Luffy was very excited and kept the oars aside, then stretched out his arms, climbed onto the tricky pole of the fishing boat, and looked ahead. Well, we're almost there. When Qin Ming said this, he was also very happy, and finally returned to the village safely. Okay, look at me throwing it into the village in one breath, throwing it so many times, my stomach is really hungry. Luffy jumped off the stick quickly, then stretched out his arms, grabbed the sea kings in front of him, lifted it high, stood on the boat, turned around a few times, and threw the sea kings out forcefully. Perhaps it was because Luffy used more force this time, which made the ship shake more violently, and the fat man who was unconscious before was finally shaken awake. The fat man who had just woken up didn't understand what was going on, he just felt his stomach churning, hurried to the side of the boat, and vomited continuously. Qin Ming knew that the reason for this fat man was most likely because the ship would shake violently from time to time, which made him seasick. Seeing that the Sea Kings was thrown by Luffy and flew more than 100 meters away, and fell heavily on the ground, Qin Ming heard an unusually piercing rattling sound before he had time to appreciate Luffy's terrifying strength. Huh, what's that sound? Luffy standing beside the boat said doubtfully. Qin Ming followed the ear-piercing rattling sound, and found that the plank at Luffy's feet was broken. No, this ship is going to sink. As soon as Qin Ming yelled these words, the bottom of the small fishing boat completely shattered, and after a while, the seawater flooded up. Why is the ship like this? Luffy said in shock. It's not all because you just throw sea kings there, the boat can't handle the pressure. Seeing more and more seawater seeping up, Qin Ming said anxiously. In fact, what Qin Ming said is correct. Before Luffy stood on the boat and threw the huge sea kings several times, his feet stepped on the board hard every time. Finally, when Luffy threw the sea kings for the last time, the ship the small fishing boat that had been with Qin Ming for more than half a year could no longer bear the heavy pressure brought by Luffy, and sank shamefully. In this case, why didn't you tell me earlier? Luffy's words left Qin Ming speechless. I told you to give up the Sea Kings a long time ago, but you didn't listen. Qin Ming was about to criticize Luffy with righteous words, when he heard Luffy say, I can't swim. Seeing Luffy soaked in the seawater sinking to the bottom of the sea very quickly, Qin Ming immediately remembered that Luffy, as Devil Fruit's ability user, is a real landlubber. Seeing that the fat man was floating on the sea surface holding the broken plank, nothing would happen, Qin Ming shook his head, sighed, and jumped into the sea. When Qin Ming managed to bring the weak Luffy and the half-dead fatty back to the land, he was so tired that he was out of breath and his lips were white. Obviously, after rescuing Luffy and fatty back, Qin Ming was so exhausted that he almost collapsed. No way, when Luffy sank into the bottom of the sea, there was still a distance of more than 100 meters from the ground. Originally, this distance was not a big problem for Qin Ming, and it was enough to swim back and forth several times. However, since Luffy soaked in the seawater is completely unable to use his strength, Qin Ming is swimming with a person on his back. With the resistance of the water, one can imagine the burden on him. The most important thing is that a Luffy is enough for Qin Ming to struggle. When he took Luffy to swim towards the land, he glanced back inadvertently, and saw that the fat man who was originally supported by the wooden plank floating on the sea also sank to the bottom of the ocean. This fat man can be said to be the first friend Qin Ming made after he came to the world of One Piece. In addition, the fat man's family has saved his life. Seeing that the fat man is in crisis, how can he refuse to save him? So Qin Ming gritted his teeth and took Luffy back to swim and rescued the fat man. Just like that, Qin Ming grabbed the fat man with one hand, and took Luffy with the other hand, exerting all his strength, he swam desperately towards the shallow land. If it weren't for Qin Ming's fishing more than half a year ago, his arm strength is much stronger than before, and his body is also stronger. Otherwise, it would be impossible for him to drag Luffy and Fatty back to the land at the same time in the sea. However, this also exhausted Qin Ming. After he rescued Luffy and Fatty, his consciousness gradually fell into a coma and he became unconscious. This is normal. Qin Ming is an ordinary person. To be able to rescue two drowning people at the same time with one breath can be said to have surpassed his own limit. 
it is only natural that he would fall into a state of collapse and coma. When Qin Ming regained consciousness, it was already night, and he heard that it was very lively outside. Looking around, Qin Ming knew that he had been carried back to his house. It should be another group of fishing people who found them unconscious on the beach and rescued them. Okay, the party is on. Qin Ming just sat up on the bed, shook his drowsy head a few times, and heard a very loud and energetic voice. Immediately afterwards, a man wearing a red sleeveless vest and a straw hat broke into Qin Ming's room with a bright smile. You are really awake, come quickly, the banquet is about to start, and the main course is ours today. Just caught that sea king's this morning, its meat is delicious. You fool was almost drowned this morning, and now you are like a normal person, and you are still clamoring for a banquet, your energy is really terrifying. Qin Ming looked at the radiant Luffy speechlessly. Compared with this foodie, he looked a little sluggish. Every time his body moved, his whole body ached, and Qin Ming knew that this was due to muscle soreness caused by overwork. Qin Ming wanted to lie on the bed for a while, but was forced by Luffy to attend the banquet. We are going to see tomorrow, we must have a good time today, the meat of this banquet is really great. Luffy held a piece of meat thicker than his thigh in one hand and kept stuffing it into his mouth while talking to Qin Ming. Qin Ming, who was dragged away by Luffy, wanted to make it clear that he would not go to sea with him, but at this moment, the fat man trotted over, knelt on the ground and hugged Qin Ming's leg, crying bitterly, that's great, you are really still alive, looking at your face at that time, you look like a dead person, I thought I was going to attend your funeral. Roll, Qin Ming said to the fat man very unceremoniously, he saw that the village was full of joy, bonfires intertwined, the villagers were all smiling, and many people danced around the bonfire, everyone looked very happy happy. But the fat man actually put on a mournful expression, which made Qin Ming's slightly better mood disappear immediately. Seeing the fat man's extremely decayed expression, it was really a disgrace. When the people in the village saw Qin Ming, they all greeted him with smiles, and several young and beautiful girls came to invite Qin Ming to dance together with blushing faces, but he refused. It's not that Qin Ming is hypocritical, but that his head is still dizzy, and he was worried that he would accidentally fall into the fire while jumping, which would be a tragedy. But one person danced happily, and that was Luffy. This guy was dancing there with a group of girls, and he couldn't get enough of it while dancing. Then he danced belly dance with those girls, which made the people around him laugh and have a great time. After watching Luffy draw a human face on his belly, he used the characteristics of the rubber body to make his belly round and round. He also stuck two chopsticks on his nose, making him look ridiculous, with a smirk in his mouth. Humming an unknown pirate song, the villagers were amused. I have to say that with Luffy here, the banquet was much more lively than before. In the past, Qin Ming also participated in the banquet held in the village. Although it was very lively, it was never like this. Almost all the village names participated enthusiastically, and even he was infected. Qin Ming watched Luffy's performance while eating, and asked the fat man beside him, you can swim, why are you still drowning? Fatty is a fisherman, of course he can swim, but at that time, seeing that Fatty was in critical condition, Qin Ming rescued him first without having time to think about it. It was also the first time for Qin Ming to eat Sea King's meat and he felt that the meat was very delicious, making people want to eat it even after eating it. But soon, Qin Ming felt no appetite to eat this delicious Sea King's meat. Because the fat man said that the reason why he drowned at that time was that after he vomited, his head was dizzy, and he accidentally inhaled a few mouthfuls of seawater, and found that in the seawater he inhaled was the vomit he had vomited on the sea before. So he was disgusted and vomited on the spot. After vomiting, he opened his mouth and exhaled with a big mouthful. Just in time, a small wave hit him, and the thing he just vomited on the sea surface was sent back to his mouth, so he vomited again tragically. When he vomited, his reaction was too violent, his legs cramped accidentally, and he drowned decisively after him. Little did he know that his words had completely turned off Qin Ming's appetite. Fatty was still talking about his tragic experience, and almost didn't spit Qin Ming in disgust. In the end, Qin Ming couldn't bear it anymore, and punched the fat man. The fat man was knocked out. It's really tolerable for me to call him an immortal, what can't be tolerated? Qin Ming looked at the fat man who was knocked out by him, 
and felt relaxed all over, without the discomfort he felt before. Are you an ability user of devil fruit? When the village chief saw that Luffy stretched out his arms to pick up the meat on the plate not far away, the villagers gasped in surprise and couldn't help asking. Yeah, I ate rubber fruit, a rubber man. Luffy held the meat in both hands, kept stuffing it into his mouth, and stretched out his arms very rudely to snatch the meat from Qin Ming's hand. Originally, Qin Ming adjusted his mentality, and was about to taste the delicious Sea King's meat, but unexpectedly, the meat in his hand disappeared as soon as he opened his mouth. Your sister, you foodie, please restrain me, you have eaten at least two-thirds of the meat of such a big Sea King's. Qin Ming picked up another piece of meat angrily, but before he could eat it, it flew into Luffy's mouth again. Now Qin Ming had no choice but to choose the food that Luffy was least interested in, namely vegetables and the like to fill his stomach. Speaking of which, we also have a devil fruit in our village. The old village chief looked at Qin Ming, and turned to Luffy, who was eating meat desperately, and said, you want to invite him to go to sea. Well, he is a very reliable person, I can't be wrong, we hit it off very well. Luffy swallowed the meat in his mouth in one gulp, stretching his neck so big. Your name is Monkey D. Luffy. The village chief stroked the long white beard. He was slightly hunched over, and the wrinkles on his face could kill a fly. But when he looked into Luffy's eyes, there was a frightening gleam. What's wrong with my name? Luffy didn't notice the difference in the way the village head looked at him before, and then asked, by the way, what's his name? Before the village chief could answer, Luffy stretched out his arms, grabbed a pole, and jumped in front of Chin Ming. Chin Ming, who was eating, was taken aback by Luffy who suddenly appeared in front of him, and very rudely sprayed Luffy with chopped vegetables all over his face. What's your name? Luffy shook his head, and when he shook his head, some vegetable dregs stuck to his face flew onto the meat in his hand, then he took a bite, and said with bright eyes, after adding these things, this the meat seems to get better. Hearing Luffy's words, Chin Ming's stomach began to churn again. He resisted the urge to vomit all over Luffy, and told him his name. Chin Ming. Luffy pondered for a moment, then said, your name is really weird. Nima, your names are weird, they are all smelly and long. Chin Ming murmured something in his heart. Just as he wanted to talk to Luffy, he heard the seemingly aged village chief say, Chin Ming, come with me, I have something to talk to you about. Looking at the village chief's hunched back, Chin Ming was puzzled, wondering what the village chief wanted from him. After following the village head to a quiet and remote place, the village head said to Chin Ming, More than a year ago, someone deposited a devil fruit in our village. Send this devil fruit out. The words of the village chief made Chin Ming's heart tremble. Could it be that the devil fruit was handed over to the village by Pluton Laili, who just saved the fat man a year ago? Or did Laili come to East Blue a year ago just to deal with that devil fruit? For a moment, Chin Ming was full of thoughts, and when he came back to his senses, he heard the village chief say, If you really want to go to sea with that person, I can give you the devil fruit. The village head looked at Chin Ming with burning eyes, and continued, I can see that deep down in your heart, you are eager to go out to sea for adventure. Speaking of this, the small eyes of the village head became more and more bright, and there was a hint of heroism in his tone. This world is very big, as a man, it is normal to yearn for the vast and mysterious sea. But it's nothing, besides, you don't belong here. If you go to sea, you may really be able to find what you want. Whether you go to sea with that person is your freedom, and I will not force you. Quote. So, what's your answer? A smile appeared on the corner of the village head's mouth, looking at Qin Ming, he seemed to have already known how Qin Ming would choose. After Qin Ming learned that the village chief was willing to give him the devil fruit, his heart fluctuated. After careful consideration, he finally decided to eat the devil fruit. Previously, Qin Ming wanted to reject Luffy's invitation mainly because of his own lack of strength. If he went to sea with Luffy, it would only become a burden. But if Qin Ming eats devil fruit, his strength may not be greatly improved in a short period of time, but his future growth will have a lot of room for improvement. After all, Devil Fruit exerts different powers with different development levels of users. Qin Ming is a very persevering person. He thought about eating this Devil Fruit, so he practiced hard. The so-called hard work can make up for one's weakness. He didn't believe that he would always be a scumbag. After the village chief took out the Devil Fruit, 
Qin Ming saw the fruit known as the incarnation of the sea devil for the first time. Eat it. The hunchbacked village chief handed the devil fruit to Qin Ming with a smile. What kind of ability does this devil fruit have? In the dark, Qin Ming took the devil fruit, only to feel that the devil fruit was light in his hand, without any texture at all. The soft moonlight shone on the dark devil fruit, reflecting a faint white light. I don't know the details, but the person who gave the devil fruit to me said that this devil fruit is very special. The village head coughed and said to Qin Ming, Very special devil fruit. Thinking about it is right, if this devil fruit is just an ordinary product, then there is no need for Pluton Rayleigh to come to East Blue to deal with this devil fruit. Qin Ming had inquired from the village chief about the person who entrusted the devil fruit to the village for safekeeping. According to the characteristics described by the village chief, it should be Rayleigh himself. Taking a deep breath, Qin Ming finally bit the devil fruit hard. As soon as he ate the flesh of devil fruit, Qin Ming felt that the taste was really unpalatable. It was the most unpalatable thing he had ever eaten, and it made him want to vomit. However, Qin Ming still suppressed his nausea and swallowed the devil fruit. What are you doing here? Qin Ming just took a bite of devil fruit when he heard Luffy's voice. Huh, isn't this devil fruit? This kind of food is terrible. You don't need to hide and eat it secretly. I will never snatch it from you. When Luffy saw the devil fruit with a hole in Qin Ming's hand, his interest immediately dropped. Qin Ming saw Luffy's expression, and knew that this foodie might think that he and the village chief were secretly hiding aside to eat something good, so he came over to take a look. Did you eat this devil fruit? Luffy took the devil fruit in Qin Ming's hand, and then said in surprise, What's the matter with this devil fruit? It doesn't feel the weight at all, it's different from what I ate before. I also find it strange that my body doesn't seem to have changed after eating this devil fruit. Qin Ming watched Luffy throwing the devil fruit around speechlessly, and he regarded the devil fruit as a toy. I saw Luffy throwing the devil fruit into the sky with one hand, and stretching the other hand to shoot the devil fruit to the other side. When Luffy wanted to catch the devil fruit floating in midair, a strong wind blew by, and the light devil fruit just flew away and quickly disappeared from everyone's sight. Feel sorry. Luffy stared blankly at the devil fruit being blown further and further away by the wind in the dark night, and then said to Qin Ming. Nima, fortunately I took a bite of devil fruit first, otherwise, this devil fruit would definitely be lost by this cheater. Qin Ming rejoiced secretly, and then remembered that after eating devil fruit, his body was still the same as before, without any change. This made him feel uneasy, maybe he ate fake devil fruit. Devil fruit is divided into three departments, Paramecia, Zone, and Logia. It stands to reason that after eating devil fruit, after a short period of time, you should be able to know what ability you have obtained. But almost five minutes after Qin Ming ate the devil fruit, his body was still the same as usual, which made him feel very strange. Why do you look distressed? Now everyone is happily participating in the banquet, so you should come to play too. Luffy pulled Qin Ming while talking, and ran to the place where the villagers gathered. At this time, the banquet was in full swing, full of excitement, and all kinds of joyful songs and laughter. Affected by this happy atmosphere, Qin Ming was a little depressed at first. I feel a little better. The village chief not far away looked at Qin Ming and murmured to himself in a low voice, Lei Li, you must have never thought that I would give away that devil fruit less than two years after you handed it over to me. It's no longer our time, and the time when we rode the ocean with Roger and the others seemed to happen yesterday. Speaking of this, the village chief's bent back became straight, making him look more powerful, and a pair of small eyes stared at Qin Ming. Little guy, what do you eat? Devil fruit is the most special existence among Paramecia devil fruit, it is called growth fruit, how much power you can display this fruit is up to you. After saying this, the village head changed back to his hunchbacked image, and walked slowly back to his house with a cane. The banquet held in the village lasted until 3 o'clock in the morning. After Qin Ming came to this world, it was the first time that Qin Ming had such a good time. It can be said that with Luffy, the person who likes to hold banquets the most, everyone can't have fun if they want to have fun. When the banquet was over, Qin Ming didn't go back to his room, just lay on the ground with Luffy and others, and fell asleep. There are also a large number of villagers lying on the ground in disarray, and many of them have happy and satisfied smiles on their faces, obviously having fun at the banquet. 
Listening to the loud snoring of Luffy who was sleeping soundly beside him, Qin Ming gradually calmed down from the joy of the banquet. Well, Qin Ming, who was lying on the ground, sighed, looking at the crescent moon hanging high in the sky, thought that after eating devil fruit, he would be able to go to sea with Luffy, but judging by the current situation, it was still not possible. After eating the devil fruit, he didn't even know what the ability he gained was. In other words, even if Qin Ming wanted to strengthen his devil fruit ability, he couldn't do it. To put it bluntly, Qin Ming can't even determine the goal of his efforts now. How can he train devil fruit's ability and become stronger? Qin Ming was still thinking about something, when Luffy, who was sleeping next to him, turned around, and put a big foot on his stomach very rudely. This guy sleeps really badly. As soon as Qin Ming thought of this, he felt his whole body tense up, unable to move. It turned out that Luffy hugged Qin Ming tightly with both hands, and was drooling while sleeping, talking in his sleep, fat, don't run away. Now Qin Ming was completely embarrassed. I'm confused, you have eaten so much meat tonight, and now you still want to eat it in your dreams. I really don't know how your stomach grows. Is it because it is rubber, so the stomach stretches well? Qin Ming felt very speechless. According to his estimation, Luffy ate no less than a hundred kilograms of meat during the banquet, but this foodie is still not satisfied, and he still wants to eat meat in his dreams, so he knelt down. The most important thing is, don't hug her so tightly, you even stretched out your arms. Those who don't know will think we are having beauty. Qin Ming felt that he was very sad. After coming to the world of One Piece, the first person who had close physical contact with him was not a beautiful woman, but a foodie Luffy. Just like that, Qin Ming and Luffy, sleep in each other's arms. I don't know how long it has passed, the sky has turned slightly pale, Qin Ming didn't sleep all night, he didn't care about everything, and went out to sea with Luffy for adventure, but also worried about his lack of strength, which was tiring. These two different ideas kept popping up in Qin Ming's mind, which made him tangled up. As a man, you should be more straightforward, do what you can, and pull down if you can't, mother-in-law, what does it look like? Of course Qin Ming knew this, if he were to do something else, he would be able to make a decision right away, but the decision he made now can be said to completely change his future, and it is an extremely important turning point in his life. Faced with this situation, it is not uncommon for Qin Ming to be hesitant. Qin Ming's mood at this moment is similar to the feeling of filling out the application form after the college entrance examination on earth in the past. Whether he should choose it and how to choose it makes people feel so entangled that he wants to go crazy. His grandmas, seeing that the sky is gradually brightening and the sun is about to rise, Qin Ming is heartbroken. I have always been an ordinary person, living an ordinary life. Is it possible that I will continue to live after I come to the world of one piece? The kind of life that is as light as boiled water. No, I want to make a change. Since I met Luffy, and he took the initiative to invite me to go to sea, am I really a coward who doesn't even have the courage to go to sea? I ate devil fruit, and I am no longer the same as before. Although I don't know what the ability is, I will definitely understand it in the future. Even if my current strength is not good, I can practice and practice hard, just like fishing. I didn't know anything at the beginning, but now I have become an excellent fisherman. I will do it. If I don't go to sea, do I still think that I can be the village chief in this village? This is not what I want. Qin Ming's desire to follow Luffy to sea became more and more determined. The hesitant expression on his face was gradually replaced by determination, and there was a kind of brilliance that had never been seen in his slightly dim eyes. That is a kind of look that only those who look for the goal and go forward bravely will have. The fat man who got up to pee happened to pass by Qin Ming, and accidentally saw Qin Ming's eyes were terribly bright, very frightening, he was so frightened that he almost peed on the floor. Be good to me, he was hugged so tightly by the man in the straw hat, and he turned violent with excitement. It seems that I was right in deciding to sleep in a separate room with him, otherwise I might have been, killed, by him. Fatty thought so, and ran away from Qin Ming in a hurry. After half an hour, Luffy also woke up, and many village names opened their eyes in a daze. It's already dawn, will you come with me? Luffy stretched put the straw hat on his head, and asked Qin Ming beside him. Qin Ming smiled and nodded slightly. When Luffy saw it, he laughed loudly, 
I knew you would not reject me. You are already awake, I have prepared a new ship for you, you can leave now. Leaning on crutches, the village head came to Qin Ming's side and said. Thank you so much, you invited me to a big meal and gave us a boat. Luffy looked excited and said to the village chief. The village chief waved his hand and led Qin Ming and the others towards the seaside port. On the way, Qin Ming bid farewell to those villagers one by one. Some villagers begged Qin Ming to stay, but he refused all of them with a smile. When the fat man learned that Qin Ming decided to go to sea with the man wearing a straw hat who seemed a bit nervous and threatened to become the One Piece, he thought that Qin Ming must be crazy. Seeing the fat man crying, at first Qin Ming wanted to hug and bid farewell to the fat man. Anyway, he got along well with the fat man for more than half a year. The two can be said to be very good friends. Now he is going on a long journey to the sea, thinking about it, I really feel a little bit reluctant to part with this fat man. Unexpectedly, when the fat man saw that Qin Ming wanted to hug him, he hurriedly moved away, and said with a strange expression, No need to hug, you have to be careful in the future, it's not as peaceful outside as here, if you don't pay attention, you will lose your life, I can't I don't want to hear the news of your death so soon. How did Qin Ming know that when he was firm in his belief in life, the fat man regarded him as a gay man? He saw that what the fat man said was very sincere, and his words showed concern. It was really worthwhile for him to save people before. After waving goodbye to Fatty and the others, Qin Ming saw that Luffy had already boarded the small fishing boat. He was about to trot over there when he saw an outstretched arm flying towards him. Qin Ming's heart skipped a beat, and he faintly felt that something was wrong. Before he could say anything in the future, Luffy's outstretched arms grabbed him. Following Qin Ming, the whole body flew up, and in a blink of an eye, he came to Luffy and boarded the fishing boat. It's just that after Qin Ming was caught on the fishing boat by Luffy from a distance, when Luffy stopped, his body hit the pole of the boat heavily, and he almost passed out from the pain. Brothers, set sail. Qin Ming, who was half lying on the fishing boat, saw Luffy standing on the bow of the boat, raised his head to the sky, raised his arms, and shouted energetically. He thought to himself, smelly guy, I will teach you a lesson one day, my waist was not hit bro, really lucky. After Qin Ming and Luffy went out to sea in a small fishing boat, from the initial excitement to the later calm, followed by extreme boredom. Yes, it's boring. For 20 days, Qin Ming stayed on the small fishing boat, facing the endless sea, without seeing any other boats or islands on the way, and he never saw anyone except Luffy who was on the same boat as him. Qin Ming is better than Luffy, and he still has a little bit of navigation knowledge. At least he can tell the direction in the first few days before sailing. But after a few days, Qin Ming couldn't figure out which direction the fishing boat drifting with the wind was heading. At first, Qin Ming thought about sailing by boat, but Luffy told him that there is no need to bother, just let the boat drift with the current, anyway, sooner or later you will encounter islands. Qin Ming thought about it carefully, and felt that what Luffy said made sense. They set sail this time in a hurry. They didn't even have the most basic compass for sailing. They really went to sea with a passion. The small fishing boat that the village had prepared for Qin Ming and the others was similar to the fishing boat used by Qin Ming in the past, but this boat was prepared with sufficient food and water. Although Luffy's appetite is large, it is enough to last them for a while. Because of this, Qin Ming didn't need to fish, and lived a leisurely life on the small fishing boat. What surprised Qin Ming was that there was actually a big treasure box on the small fishing boat. He had seen the contents of the box, and it was so shiny that it could blind people's eyes. When Luffy saw the treasures in the treasure chest, his eyes lit up and he said that he would exchange these things for a huge bronze statue of a human body. Qin Ming was speechless about Luffy's stupid behavior of willing to exchange gold for copper. Although the fishing boat is small, it is more than enough to accommodate two people. It's just that staying in this extremely limited activity space for a long time and having nothing to do will really drive people crazy. Qin Ming, who had never had the experience of long-distance sailing before, now truly experienced the loneliness of sailing. Remembering that Luffy used to sail alone in a small boat on the sea, Qin Ming really found it incredible that such an active person could endure that kind of loneliness. After surviving for several days, in order to find something to do for himself, Qin Ming exercised desperately on the boat, practicing day and night, 
exhausted every day, sleeping as soon as he lay down, waking up the next day, and then continuing practice. It can be said that during these 16 days, apart from meeting the needs of daily life, Qinming spent the rest of the time exercising desperately. In order not to let Luffy disturb him, Qinming specially found something for Luffy to do, which is to let Luffy make the boat swing as much as possible without capsizing. The reason for doing this is because Qin Ming discovered that practicing the Zama step on a swaying boat is better than practicing on smooth land. Okay, watch my fishing net go wild. Luffy excitedly took the fishing net Qin Ming gave him, and fished it into the sea. Standing beside the fishing boat, his body spun rapidly, and the fishing net in his hand moved accordingly. As Luffy's body turned faster and faster, the speed of the fishing net gliding in the sea also increased exponentially. After a while, dozens of wooden barrels full of food that were thrown into the sea by Luffy earlier were caught by the fishing net in his hand. The dozens of heavy wooden barrels were caught by the fishing nets, which increased the resistance of the fishing nets sliding on the sea surface. In addition, Luffy's body turned fast, and he kept dragging dozens of wooden barrels around the small fishing boat with the fishing nets. Turning around, after a while, a small Uzumaki was actually created. The fishing boat that was involved in the little Uzumaki shook violently, which was exactly what Qinming wanted. He just wanted to exercise his body in this environment. Qinming, who was striding forward on the violently shaking small fishing boat, remembered that Luffy watched him throw buckets of food into the sea before, and even asked him if the weather was good, so he took the food out and put it on the sea to dry, which made him feel rather funny. When Luffy saw the wooden barrels full of food began to sink into the sea, he didn't care about anything and wanted to jump into the sea to pick up those wooden barrels. Qin Ming was speechless for a while. This really gave up her life for food. Qin Ming handed the fishing net to Luffy and asked him to fish up those wooden barrels. As Qin Ming expected, Luffy started to scoop up the wooden barrels with great enthusiasm. After all, those wooden barrels were filled with the meat he likes to eat. This is also the reason why Qin Ming threw the wooden barrel full of food into the sea. Only in this way, Luffy will be busy fishing for the wooden barrel, and will no longer have the leisure to make troubles, so that he cannot exercise at ease, and can also help him why not create the environment you need to exercise. In this way, Qin Ming threw dozens of wooden barrels full of food into the sea every day, and then asked Luffy to catch them with fishing nets. What made Qin Ming speechless the most was that Luffy seemed to be addicted to the game. On the tenth day they went to sea, this guy took the initiative to throw those wooden barrels containing food into the sea, and then played a game of fishing nets to catch the barrels. I had a great time playing, and by the way, I helped Qin Ming make a little Uzumaki for exercise. After 16 days of hard training day and night, Qin Ming obviously felt that his body was much stronger, and his strength was much stronger than before. Otherwise, he would not be able to throw away dozens of barrels of food without taking a breath. Into the sea. Although his muscles were sore and exhausted after hard training every day, when he woke up the next day, Qin Ming was still able to endure the exhaustion of his body and continue the high-intensity training. From the beginning of insisting on 70 consecutive push-ups, 300 standing frog jumps, and Zama for an hour and a half every day, and now the training intensity has doubled, it only took Qin Ming half a month to gradually adapt to this kind of madness. Self-harm exercises. During this period, Qin Ming was so tired that he didn't even have the strength to eat, but Luffy took a lot of meat and poured it down, almost choking him to death. Luffy looked at Qin Ming exercising desperately every day, and he didn't say anything, but sometimes he would laugh foolishly when he saw Qin Ming sweating profusely and his clothes soaked in sweat. It can be said that in the past 10 days, as long as Qin Ming exercised, Luffy played the game of fishing for wooden barrels with fishing nets. But it also affects the speed of sailing. The small Uzumaki made by Luffy can enhance the effect of Qin Ming's exercise, but the sailing speed of the fishing boat will be greatly affected. It's just that Luffy and Qin Ming didn't steer the boat, and let the boat drift with the wind. It can be said that whenever Qin Ming and Luffy fell asleep on the boat at night, their boat's speed was faster than during the day. In the first few days after going to sea, Qin Ming was still wondering what kind of ability he got after eating devil fruit, but no matter how he tried, he was still at a loss for the unknown ability, and finally he simply gave up and put all the focus on cultivation. Okay, let's stop here today.
Seeing Qin Ming sitting slumped on the fishing boat, gasping for breath, and stopped striding forward, Luffy shouted energetically, trying to fish out the wooden barrels caught by the fishing nets. But just when Luffy brought up the fishing net containing dozens of wooden barrels, suddenly a big fish jumped out of the sea, and swallowed the fishing net in his hand and the wooden barrel full of food in one gulp go down. With a plop, the big fish quickly got into the sea after eating, and disappeared in a blink of an eye. Not only was Luffy dumbfounded when he saw only half of the dilapidated fishing net left in his hand, even Chin Ming who was sitting on the ground was also stunned. Hey, give me back my meat, I'm the man who is going to be the pirate king, grab something from me, you've already made up your mind. After reacting, Luffy dropped the tattered fishing net in his hand, came to the side of the boat, stepped on the pole of the boat, and shouted imposingly in the direction where the big fish disappeared. It's a pity that the big fish had already entered the bottom of the sea and disappeared. Despite Luffy shouting there, the sea was still calm. Chin Ming dragged his exhausted body to Luffy's side. He wanted to offer some words of persuasion, but when he saw Luffy's serious expression, without his usual laughing and joking appearance, and his eyes showing a gleam of brilliance, he couldn't help but feel a shudder in his heart. You have a way to catch the big fish that robbed us just now, right? Luffy stared at the sea with a solemn face, and then said, We are pirates, how can we watch our things being taken away, but do nothing, even if the opponent is a fish, I will go all out. Speaking of this, Luffy looked at Chin Ming and said excitedly, And it ate all the meat I like very much in one bite, even I can't bear to eat all the meat at once, I will never forgive that fish. After listening to Luffy's words, Chin Ming felt very embarrassed. What you said at the end is the key, and it's just a foreshadowing. The dozens of barrels of meat were eaten by big fish, and there was really not much meat left on board. Based on Luffy's appetite, he could only eat it for another four or five days. Chin Ming was about to respond when he saw the meat not far away. On the surface of the sea, something flew out. Taking a closer look, the one that flew out of the sea was the big fish that robbed them of food not long ago. When the big fish got back into the sea, it even moved its blue tail fin and made a sound like the laughing laughter of humans seemed to despise Luffy Chin Ming. Ah, it dares to come back and provoke us, I want to beat it up. The single-celled Luffy was quickly driven to a duel with the big fish. This is a grunt fish. They can make laughing sounds similar to humans. This is the first time I have seen this kind of fish. Chin Ming stroked his chin, looked thoughtful, and said to Luffy beside him. This grunt fish, when Chin Ming was learning some fishing techniques, he had seen a description of it in a marine book. When this kind of fish grows up, its whole body is sea blue, without scales, and its body size is 15 to 20 meters long. The bulging gills can make a mocking sound like a human being, and its favorite thing is to tease those fishermen, it can be said that many fishermen are very troubled by this grunting fish. I should be able to catch it, but it will take some effort. If it were Qin Ming 20 days ago, he would not have the confidence to say such a thing. He had just finished exercising, and the clothes all over his body were soaked in water, so wet. He shook his slightly sore arms, and unexpectedly a lot of water stains flew out from his sleeves, which showed how much sweat he had left from the previous exercise. Then hurry up and do it. I have never eaten this kind of fish. If its meat is delicious, then I will forgive it, ha ha ha. What Luffy said inadvertently made Chin Ming very painful. You have used it to fill your stomach, so forgive it for its use. A mere fish has the guts to come to trouble us. Doesn't it know that we are on a pirate ship, maybe we didn't fly the pirate flag, so it mistakenly thinks we are all fishermen. Chin Ming found the two spare fishing nets from the fishing boat, laughed a little, and said in his heart, I never thought that the first opponent I went to see would be a non-human being. Sure enough, there may be surprises in this sea at any time. Holding a fishing net in one hand, Chin Ming stood beside the boat, watching the 18-meter-long giggling fish jumping out of the sea from time to time in the distance, making ironic mocking sounds, and shaking its blue his tail fin looked down on them, and the corners of his mouth turned up slightly. The caudal fin of this grunting fish is very distinctive. When it is swung up, it is similar to the shape of a human giving a middle finger to others. It makes people feel inexplicably despised by it. Shall I row over there? Luffy took the oars and said to Chin Ming beside him with great enthusiasm. Don't interfere, it is my prey, and I can solve it alone. 
Qin Ming said very imposingly, his face was full of confidence. Oh, Luffy exclaimed exaggeratedly, and said to Qin Ming, you look quite masculine. Qin Ming chuckled twice. Although his body was still in a state of fatigue, for some reason, he felt that he could handle the grinning fish several times bigger than himself. This is a kind of intuition as a fisherman, which was cultivated by Qin Ming after more than half a year of fishing life. Although Qin Ming's strength was average in the past, he was still an excellent fisherman. He could clearly know what fish he could catch and what fish he couldn't handle. Therefore, every time Qin Ming went fishing in the sea, he basically did not do any useless work. He chose the location of the sea area where the target fish school was located, and he could return with a full load as soon as he cast the net. To put it bluntly, this guy is a professional fisherman. Although some fish were too big for him to hunt in the past, he is still clear about the weaknesses of those fish. It can be said that in this piece of East Blue, except for some unknown fish in the deep sea, there are nearly 80% of the fish, and Qin Ming has seen descriptions about them in various marine books. Qin Ming changed from a person who knew nothing about fishing to a very good fisherman in just half a year. During this period, his efforts and sweat were dozens of times more than others. Qin Ming alone has read more books about fishing than most of the fishermen in the fishing and hunting village he was in before. Perhaps the crazy training for more than 10 days in a row has achieved much better results than I expected. Thinking so, Qin Ming threw the fishing net in his right hand to the wooden barrel not far away, and used the fishing net in his hand to drag the wooden barrels caught in the net into the sea. Ah, I moved it out on purpose and wanted to use it as a snack later. Why did you throw it into the sea? Seeing Qin Ming throwing the three wooden barrels full of meat into the sea, Luffy immediately shouted anxiously at Qin Ming. Your sister, these wooden barrels are more than enough to hold one person, and you eat three barrels of meat in a row, is it just for snacks? Even after getting along with Luffy for a period of time, Qin Ming would still sometimes be shocked by his big appetite. If you want to induce prey to take the bait, how can you do it without bait? Qin Ming asked back, and then he stared at the sea in front of him. This grunt fish likes to tease fishermen. It has amazing brute force and sharp fangs, which can easily bite through the fishing net made of iron wire. Not to mention the ordinary fishing net made of coarse cloth and some flax in his hand. The fishing net that was bitten by the grunt fish in Luffy's hand earlier was made of iron wire, but unfortunately there is only one such fishing net. After Qin Ming threw the bait into the sea with the fishing net, the grinning fish in the distance did not respond, and the sea was calm. It doesn't seem to be fooled. You threw the fishing net so close. Is it really okay? Luffy on the side scratched his head anxiously, looking like a monkey. I think it's almost there. Qin Ming did throw the fishing net and the barrel very close to the fishing boat he was on, at most only one meter away. The reason for doing this is because he knows the habits of grunt fish. When a fisherman uses bait to lure them, they will definitely eat the bait and fight back against the fisherman, and put the bait further away from the fishing boat. The closer the grinning fish gets, the angrier it will be. That's right, Qin Ming intentionally put the bait so close just to make the grunting fish angry. Doing this would also make it easier for him to hunt the nearly 20 meter long grinning fish next. Wait, you have to stand still and don't fall into the sea. Seeing ripples on the sea surface on the right side of the fishing boat, Qin Ming knew that the grunting fish on the bottom of the sea was rapidly approaching their boat, so he hurriedly called out to remind Luffy. Why? Before Luffy finished speaking, there was a loud bang, and he staggered standing beside the boat, and the whole person, including the straw hat he was wearing, flew out together. However, Luffy's reaction was not slow. After taking back the straw hat in midair, he stretched out his arms to grab the tricky rod of the fishing boat, and flew back to the fishing boat with a whoosh. The ship Qin Ming and the others were on shook violently, obviously it was hit by something, and it came from the bottom of the sea. Chang Zi stabilized his figure, Qin Ming knew that it was a grinning fish hiding on the bottom of the sea and bumping into their boat. Bang bang. There were two more powerful and swift impacts, and Qin Ming and his fishing boat were hit by the grinning fish on the bottom of the sea, causing them to rotate 720 degrees on the back surface. Wonderful. Luffy, who was hanging on the pole of the boat, held onto the stick tightly with one hand, and held down the straw hat on his head with the other hand. He actually took advantage of the inertia of the fishing boat being hit by the rapid rotation, 
and also spun in the air, playing in circles. Qin Ming felt a pain in the ass watching it. Even though I said that you don't need to make a move, you don't have to be so heartless and play on your own, right? But this also shows from the side that Luffy completely believes that Qin Ming can handle that ferocious grunt fish alone, otherwise, the fishing boat will be knocked into the air, how can he have such fun? Feeling Luffy's unconditional trust in him, Qin Ming only felt a warm current flow in his heart, which is really good. Until now, Qin Ming really had the realization that he was already a member of the Straw Hat Pirates in the future. Even if I really can't help them much in battle in the future, I just need to do my part well. I'm not sailing alone. Qin Ming's eyes became more and more bright, and the fatigue he had shown before seemed to be swept away, making him look very energetic. With a plop, the grinning fish jumped out from the bottom of the sea after knocking Qin Ming's fishing boat into the air, and ate the fishing net and wooden barrel in one bite. Qin Ming had expected this kind of behavior of the laughing fish. With a loud shout, the fishing net in his left hand was thrown out, but it was aimed not at the head of the laughing fish, but at the tail of the laughing fish. When the grinning fish was about to go into the bottom of the sea, the fishing net thrown by Qin Ming happened to catch the grinning fish's caudal fin. Then he held the fishing net tightly with his left hand and turned it quickly, so the fishing net also pushed the grinning fish's caudal fin over tighter. The veins on Qin Ming's left arm were exposed, obviously exerting all his strength, he clenched his teeth and firmly grasped the fishing net in his hand. At this time, the grinning fish had already dived back into the sea, struggling even harder, causing waves of waves on the sea surface and Qin Ming's hand holding the fishing net was also bleeding from the friction of the rough fishing net in his hand, and his body moved forward uncontrollably. If this continued, he would really be dragged into the sea by the grinning fish. Do not underestimate me, Qin Ming shouted angrily, grabbed the fishing net tightly, turned around quickly, stepped forward with his right foot, and pulled all the strength with his left hand. Hiss. The fishing net was forcibly pulled off but the grinning fish in the sea was still subjected to the strong inertia, and Qin Ming forcibly dragged it out of the sea and flew towards their fishing boat. The grunting fish let out a piercing mocking sound, opened its bloody mouth wide, and went towards Qin Ming from the air. Only now did Qin Ming see the front of the grinning fish clearly, and saw that the head of the grinning fish was actually shaped like a snake, and its mouth was similar to that of a python, capable of swallowing things several times larger than its own mouth. Facing the attack of the laughing fish, Qin Ming was fearless, jumped up, came to the side of the laughing fish, clenched his fist with his right hand, and hit the left side of the laughing fish with a heavy punch, you have already lost. Boom, the grinning fish fell on the plank of the ship like a cannonball, causing the fishing boat to bounce slightly after the shock. After being beaten by Qin Ming and falling on the boat plank, Ji Yu Xiaoyu didn't respond, and was punched by Qin Ming so hard that he passed out alive. After falling back onto the boat, Qin Ming stepped on the unconscious grinning fish, and shouted excitedly, I won. At this moment, at this moment, on a small fishing boat on the sea, a young man wearing a straw hat was hanging on the stick, grinning and laughing loudly. The howling sounds blended together, floating far away on this seemingly boundless sea, and lingered for a long time. Before going out to sea, Qin Ming couldn't hunt this ferocious and powerful grinning fish at all but now, he can deal with this kind of fish alone. Although the grunt fish cannot be compared with the giant sea kings, it is still a relatively difficult fish in East Blue. Qin Ming can deal with it now, which means that his recent crazy training is extremely effective and the results are remarkable, which makes him I saw hope for the future. As long as you work hard, you can still make a difference. Qin Ming gasped for breath, his hands were bleeding, his left hand was worn out by the fishing net, and his right hand was injured by the rock-hard flesh of the glaffing fish when he attacked the glaffing fish. The blood flowed continuously at the joints of his fist. His grandma's, this grinning fish has no scales, and the meat is so hard that it hurts me to death. Qin Ming shook his numb right hand and began to bandage himself. At this moment, Luffy, who had spun around on the stick, also jumped down from it, and said excitedly, Okay, today the big meal is here. In this way, Qin Ming and Luffy enjoyed a feast happily. After the grinning fish incident, another seven days passed in the blink of an eye. Today, Qin Ming is still training unremittingly. He feels that his exercise effect seems to be better than ever before. It seems that since he ate the devil fruit, 
he has been exercising desperately, and he can clearly feel that he is slowly growing. Slow to strong. What exactly is your devil fruit ability? If it's an interesting ability, then when we have a banquet in the future, you can also perform well. With a piece of meat in his mouth, Luffy came to Chin Ming's side and said excitedly. Nani, is it possible that you still think that I am like you, when the banquet is held, I stick my nostrils with chopsticks and then dance belly dance. The corners of Chin Ming's mouth twitched when he thought of himself performing a belly dance with chopsticks stuck in his nostrils in front of everyone and his chest exposed. I have a way to know if the devil fruit you eat is real. Luffy said to Chin Ming with a look on my face that I am a smart person. When Chin Ming saw Luffy's expression, he faintly felt that something was wrong. With Luffy as a single cell, how could he think of any good ideas? Just as Chin Ming opened his mouth, Luffy grinned at him, reached out and grabbed Chin Ming, threw Chin Ming out of the fishing boat, and shouted to Chin Ming who was about to fall into the sea, don't worry, if something happens to you, I will definitely save you. Demon fruit power is cursed by the sea, if you want to know whether you are a real devil fruit power user, just take a dip in the sea and you will be clear. I'm so smart. Speaking of the latter, the simple Luffy still sighed heartlessly. Nima, let me put my hand into the sea, and I can know whether I am a devil fruit ability user after a short period of time. Why did you throw me into the sea? Before Chin Ming could say anything, he fell into the sea. As soon as he fell into the sea, he used to be a master swimmer, but now he can't use any strength, and his body is getting weaker and weaker. This is definitely the sequelae of eating devil fruit. Fortunately, seeing that Chin Ming was about to sink to the bottom of the sea, Luffy hurriedly stretched out his arms, trying to catch Chin Ming up. Chin Ming heaved a sigh of relief. Although Luffy was acting like a fool, he was able to save him in time, so he didn't cheat anyone. As soon as this idea changed, Chin Ming realized something was wrong. Why did he seem to be spinning in circles? Most importantly, Luffy's outstretched hand seemed to be further away from him. How could this big Uzumaki appear suddenly? Luffy held his head and let out an exclamation. Looking at Chin Ming who was involved in the big Uzumaki, the anxious and shocked expression on his face could be seen at a glance. Yes, this big Uzumaki just appeared out of nowhere. One moment the sea was normal, but the next second, a big Uzumaki appeared out of nowhere, and Chin Ming who was in the sea and Luffy who was staying on the fishing boat were all involved. In other words, Chin Ming was just thrown into the sea by Luffy, and the big Uzumaki came to greet them. It has to be said that this is a tragedy. At the moment when the big Uzumaki appeared, Chin Ming who was involved in Uzumaki was dumbfounded, and Luffy who suffered together was also dumbfounded. It is said that the weather in the world of One Piece is ever changing, and the weather in the Grand Line is even more unpredictable. Chin Ming really believed it. When he was caught in Uzumaki, a man with orange hair appeared in his mind, pretty girl. If Nami was here, maybe I wouldn't have fallen for Luffy, who is a cheater. Chin Ming was in the rapidly rotating big Uzumaki, and he was extremely uncomfortable when he was subjected to the powerful tearing force of the Uzumaki, as if his body was about to be torn apart. Coupled with the fact that he was soaked in sea water, his whole body was limp and weak. Facing this big Uzumaki who could not be resisted by manpower, Chin Ming was really helpless now. But the only thing to be thankful for is that Chin Ming didn't sink into the bottom of the sea just because he was involved in the big Uzumaki, but just kept circling Uzumaki there, making him dizzy. And Luffy on the fishing boat was in a hurry. He tried to stretch out his arms several times to catch Chin Ming, but Chin Ming turned too fast in Uzumaki, and he still couldn't catch Chin Ming. If it goes on like this, not only Chin Ming will be finished, but he will also be killed. Luffy is still very clear about this. Why did this happen? Today's weather was very good. In such a clear and fine weather, I didn't expect to encounter such a big Uzumaki and put Chin Ming in danger. I was really surprised. Seeing that Chin Ming could not be rescued temporarily, Luffy forced himself to calm down, stroked his chin, and talked to himself while thinking about how to get out of the current predicament. Nima, what a fart, if you hadn't thrown me into the sea, I wouldn't have encountered such a shitty thing. Chin Ming, who was walking around Uzumaki there, heard Luffy's words, and really wanted to give Luffy a slap in the face. What time is it, he still has the heart to express emotion there, it's really cheating without limit. Although I wanted to ask for help, there was no one around. 
Luffy looked around and saw that the sea was empty, except for them, he could no longer see anyone, and sighed helplessly. Oh, the ship was sunk by Uzumaki, and Chin Ming and I are buried here there is a way, and I can't swim. When Chin Ming heard Luffy's words, he felt that this girl really didn't care about death. In this situation, he could face it calmly and calmly, even if he didn't write a word of convincing. It's just that Chin Ming saw that he was getting deeper and deeper into Uzumaki, and accidentally drank a few mouthfuls of sea water, which made him feel even more uncomfortable. He really didn't even have the strength to shout out. Is it because Luffy and I went out to sea and changed the track of the original pirate Wang Li's history, leading to Luffy and I really dying here? Chin Ming had just thought of this, and Luffy, who was sitting on the fishing boat thinking hard, had a flash of light in his mind, and seemed to have a good idea. By the way, in this case, it doesn't make any difference whether you can swim or not. Chin Ming, just wait, we will be rescued immediately. While Luffy shouted loudly, he quickly stretched out his arms and brought over the big treasure chest full of gold placed in the corner of the fishing boat. Then pour all the gold in the treasure chest into Uzumaki without hesitation. Hearing Luffy's words, Chin Ming thought that Luffy had really thought of a good solution, and was overjoyed, but at this moment, his head suddenly hurt, and it seemed that he was hit by many hard objects, and he almost fainted. Immediately afterwards, Chin Ming discovered that those things that hit his head were actually glittering gold, which looked a little familiar. Isn't this the gold in our ship's treasure chest? Did Luffy throw all the gold away and just hit me in the head? In fact, Chin Ming was right. Although both he and Luffy were involved in Uzumaki, his position was relatively lower than Uzumaki. Therefore, when Luffy threw gold, some of the gold happened to hit him head of. Regarding Luffy's act of throwing away all the gold, how could Chin Ming not know that he was just reluctant to throw away the meat, preferring not to have the priceless gold, but to preserve the meat as much as possible, a typical super foodie behavior. It's just that if you throw gold, don't hit my head. For a while, Chin Ming was full of resentment towards Luffy, and he couldn't help but feel angry when he wheeled Luffy a hundred times. But soon, Chin Ming discovered that when Luffy wanted to help you, the embarrassing things you could imagine were not the worst, only worse. Rubber Bazooka After Luffy on the fishing boat threw out the empty big treasure box, his arms stretched back suddenly, and then bounced back at an extremely fast speed, hitting the big treasure box directly. The big treasure chest hit by Luffy flew towards Chin Ming with lightning speed. Boom! The empty treasure chest hit Chin Ming's side accurately, and the force generated by the powerful impact actually stirred up a wave in the big Uzumaki, making Chin Ming fall from the Uzumaki, flew out. Before Chin Ming could react, Luffy hurriedly stretched out his arms to grab Chin Ming who had just flown out of Uzumaki, and stuffed him into the big treasure chest. When Chin Ming was thrown into the big treasure chest by Luffy, his head unfortunately hit the hard lid of the treasure chest several times. After receiving such treatment, and being injured by Uzumaki's powerful tearing force and Luffy's rubber bazooka when he flew out of the big Uzumaki earlier, Chin Ming only felt that the bones of his body were torn apart alive. Unable to bear the severe pain that came one after another, Chin Ming finally passed out at the moment when the lid of the big treasure chest was closed. His last thought before he passed out was, I must kill him. After this time, Chin Ming finally understood why Zoro, a tough guy, would sometimes be punished by Luffy, a god god, to the point of threatening to kill him. It's not that our hearts are too evil, it's that Luffy is too deceitful. Most importantly, after surviving the crisis of the great Uzumaki, Chin Ming finally came to his senses, following Luffy on an adventure out to sea, the first thing you need to have is that tenacious vitality like an immortal. As for strength or something, that's all floating clouds. After Chin Ming was forced into the treasure chest, Luffy also hurriedly found a big wooden barrel full of meat, and hid in the wooden barrel while desperately stuffing the meat into his mouth. Immediately afterwards, the small fishing boat that Luffy and Chin Ming had been on for nearly a month was destroyed in the big Uzumaki. After an unknown amount of time, Chin Ming woke up from the coma. He felt his head was groggy, and he barely opened his eyes. The surrounding area was dark and narrow, making it very inconvenient to move. Shaking his head, Chin Ming remembered that he and Luffy had met Uzumaki before, and then Luffy had a bad idea and stuffed him into a big treasure chest. I'm still alive, it looks like I've been rescued, but where am I now? 
Qin Ming was in pain all over his body, as if he had been punched hundreds of times. He was a little worried that if he was still drifting on the sea, he might really be doomed. The keyhole in this big treasure chest can barely ventilate, but what worries Qin Ming is that some water has already entered the treasure chest, and if it continues like this, it will sink sooner or later. But after a while, Qin Ming felt that something was wrong, why he was in the treasure chest, all in one place, it didn't feel like floating in the sea at all. How is this going? Could it be that I was picked up by someone? Qin Ming was wondering, when he heard a thick and gloomy voice, Kebi, what is the most beautiful thing in the sea? This, of course it's Miss Alvida. Ha 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 ha. A frightened and flattering voice reached Qin Ming who was inside the treasure chest, and now he knew where he was. Alvida, isn't that the female pirate who holds a big iron rod, wears a bowler hat, has tits all over her face, is obese, ugly, and has a cruel personality. It turned out that this short, fat man fished me up, he must have thought there was some treasure in this treasure chest. If this Alvida knows that the treasure box contains me, in my current state, I might be beaten to death by her. I'd better hide here and wait and see what happens. Qin Ming knew that Alvida was the female pirate who offered a bounty of 5 million berry. This kind of bounty was pitifully low, but it was not something he could deal with now that he lost half of his life. If I'm in full strength, maybe I can really beat this fat lady. Qin Ming felt that the box he was in was lifted by someone, and only heard Alvida, who was carrying a big iron rod, pointing to a few of his men and said, You carry this thing in, we will go to snatch the prey first, and when we come back, and then check carefully what treasures are inside. Beautiful Miss Alvida, this is rare prey. A middle-aged pirate with a flat head said to Alvida, That's right, we're going to take down that ship, you guys have to work harder for me. Alvida made a loud and ugly voice, and laughed sinisterly a few times. From the conversations of these people, Qin Ming knew that what Alvida wanted to snatch was a luxurious cruise ship, and Luffy might be on that ship, and it would be a tragedy for Alvida who met Luffy at that time. After a slight shaking, Qin Ming who was hidden in the treasure chest was carried to a storage room. From time to time, the sound of shelling and the shouts of pirates could be heard in his ears. After more than 10 minutes, these sounds gradually weakened. Qin Ming thought that most of the pirates on this ship should go to plunder another ship. Great opportunity to get out. As long as you rendezvous with Luffy, it won't be a big deal. Qin Ming made up his mind, took the opportunity to sneak out and talk about it later. Just when Qin Ming was about to take action, he heard the voice of a male pirate, Who are you? I don't think I've seen you before. A few seconds later, there was only a bang, and the pirate who had just spoken fell silent. The pirates are really stupid, I'll come and see what treasures are in here. A very pleasant girl's voice reached Qin Ming's ears. With a bang, Qin Ming felt his eyes gradually light up. The treasure box he was in was opened, and what caught his eyes was a beautiful girl with short orange hair. At this time, Qin Ming was lying on his back in the treasure chest, just facing Nami's bright eyes in front of him. Qin Ming did not expect that the first meeting between him and Nami happened under such circumstances. I have to say that Nami is indeed a very beautiful girl. Her short orange hair makes her look charming and heroic, which is very attractive. Her exquisite facial features are even more impeccable. Looking at the situation, Nami must have sneaked into this ship while Alvita led most of the members of the pirate group to snatch another ship, trying to steal all the property on Alvita's ship. As a result, Nami slipped into the storage room on the Alvita ship and saw such a conspicuous big treasure box. He immediately opened the treasure box excitedly, but unexpectedly there was a person inside. After looking at Nami for three seconds, Qin Ming, who was lying on his back in the treasure box, hadn't had time, no, it should be said that he hadn't figured out how to greet Nami, when Nami sighed softly, so there is no treasure in it. Quote. Then with a snap, under Qin Ming's astonished eyes, Nami locked the treasure chest again without hesitation. Nami's actions can be said to completely ignore Qin Ming's existence. My embarrassment, even if you don't find the treasure, you will drag me out anyway, you only have treasure in your eyes, how realistic are you? Seeing the surroundings return to darkness again, Qin Ming was speechless. Just when Qin Ming was about to smash the treasure chest to get out, he heard a fierce voice, Who are you, woman? Do you want to steal our treasure? It's so bold. 
If Miss Alvita didn't ask us to come back and check the treasure chest, she would have stolen all the things here. Fortunately, we came back in time, otherwise, Miss Alvita would blame us, and her big iron rod would have shot us to death. Anyway, catch this daring woman first. She's not bad looking. She's so pretty and wants to be a thief. She has to be educated. Chin Ming, who was hiding in the treasure chest, heard the conversation of those pirates, and realized that it was because of his existence that Nami's theft failed this time. And looking at the situation, it seems that Nami hastily locked the treasure chest because he sensed that someone was approaching this storage room. Apparently, Nami saw Chin Ming in the treasure chest in a state of embarrassment. He was not in a good state of mind and had injuries on his body. He thought that if he was discovered by pirates, he might suffer, so he covered the treasure chest so that Chin Ming Ming survived. I hate pirates the most, just because you want to educate me, don't laugh to death. Seeing that the door of the storage room was blocked, Nami couldn't get out, so he had to take out the three-section stick tied to the leg of the sitting chair, and synthesized it into a long stick, ready to fight. Still stubborn when you're about to die, we'll make you feel good before you get a taste of Miss Alvita's big iron rod. After a pirate said this, Chin Ming, who was hiding in the big treasure chest, heard several obscene laughter. Then there was the sound of ping pong pong fighting, and not long after, Chin Ming clearly heard Nami making a weak snort. Hearing the sound, Nami was obviously hurt. If Nami dies here, how will I and Luffy sail the seas like headless chickens? Pit father ah. What's more, Nami was able to cover him, a stranger he met for the first time, and wanted him not to be harmed by the pirates, which shows that Nami's heart is still very kind. Chin Ming really didn't want Nami to hang up here. Most importantly, from the tone of voices of those pirates earlier, they were obviously molesting and insulting Nami, which made Chin Ming feel very uncomfortable. You are paralyzed. When I watched One Piece, Nami was one of my favorite characters. I didn't even have time to talk to Nami. You little little pirates dare to say something rude to Nami in front of me, foul language. Do you really think I'm transparent? It is really tolerable, what is unbearable? Chin Ming was furious in his heart, gathered all the strength in his body, and pushed his feet forward. Boom, I'm going to beat you up. Chin Ming yelled angrily, smashed the big treasure chest, and jumped out of the treasure chest, scaring the pirates walking towards Nami so much that their jaws almost fell to the ground. When Chin Ming smashed the big treasure box with one kick, his outstretched right foot just happened to kick the crotch of one of the pirates outside the treasure box, and the pirate turned blue from the pain on the spot, clutching his crotch he fell to the ground and couldn't get up again. In other words, as soon as Chin Ming came out, he killed a pirate in seconds. And Nami behind Chin Ming was also shocked by Chin Ming who popped out of the big treasure chest in a blink of an eye. This seemingly weak man with a sick face could take that very it was a solid treasure chest that was smashed. If Chin Ming knew that Nami's first impression of him was that he was a sick man, he might really go crazy. There is no way, Chin Ming has been exercising desperately for the past month, and he was beaten heavily by Luffy, not only his head was smashed and bumped, but his body was also devastated. As a demon fruit power, I've even soaked in sea water, so it's strange that I have a good face. Coincidentally, when Chin Ming came out of the treasure chest, on the ship attacked by the Alvita pirates, he slept comfortably on a wooden barrel, and then he was fished out as a wine barrel Luffy also just woke up, stretched comfortably, and shouted with great energy, sleep soundly. Luffy, who suddenly got out of the barrel, accidentally knocked out the pirate who was about to open the barrel with a punch while stretching, and also scared the other pirates who were watching so much that their jaws dropped. Land. Who are you kid? Why did you jump out of that treasure chest? Several pirates hurriedly surrounded Chin Ming and asked sharply. Chin Ming glanced around, and saw that the storage room was not too big, and there were some belongings scattered in it, which seemed not very rich. Thinking about it, Alvita is just a pirate with a bounty of 5 million berry. To put it bluntly, even some low-level pirates have higher bounties than her. It is surprising that her pirate ship has a lot of property. Well, there are only 7 pirates, it seems that it is not enough to beat. Chin Ming saw that there were only 7 pirates, and for some reason, such an idea came to his mind. He saw that the pirates surrounding him all had ferocious faces, fierce eyes, and sturdy builds. 
They all held a long knife in their hands, and three of them wore light blue turbans on their heads. Are these pirates? Thinking so, Qin Ming took a step forward and protected Nami behind him. More than half a year ago, when Qin Ming came to the world of One Piece, he was not afraid of making you laugh when he said it, and sometimes worried that some pirate group would attack the village, and then he would be in trouble. After all, Qin Ming was just an ordinary person at that time, with no fighting ability, and he would be unlucky to encounter vicious pirates. What's more, he just came to this strange and familiar world of One Piece, and occasionally he would think wildly, it's not surprising either. But now, after going out to sea with Luffy, Qin Ming finally saw a real pirate in this world for the first time. Although these pirates are small characters, they can still be regarded as real pirates, but his heart is very calm at this time, not at all flustered and nervous as he imagined before, so calm that even he himself does not understand, why can I be so calm? Loosening his clenched fist, Qin Ming didn't bother to talk nonsense with those pirates, so he directly moved his hands. How dare you attack the pirates, you think you are a marine. It's the marine who will kill it too, let's go. Seeing Qin Ming attack without saying a word, those pirates were aroused immediately, and all of them raised their knives viciously and slashed at Qin Ming. Clang, clang, Qin Ming gave a roundabout kick on the spot, but the knives in the hands of the two pirates who were directly cutting at him were broken. Nami at the back stared blankly, opened his small mouth slightly, and thought to himself, What's the matter with this guy, he is obviously injured but he won't lose when he fights with those pirates. When Nami came back to his senses, there was a bang, and Qin Ming punched the fat pirate on the stomach, sending him flying out of the storage room with one punch. So strong, this guy, let's go to Miss Alvita and let her deal with this kid. The only two remaining pirates saw Qin Ming within three minutes, knocked the five pirates to the ground, without even taking a breath lost all fighting spirit, turned around and wanted to run away. How could Qin Ming give the two pirates a chance to escape? He snorted coldly, quickly caught up with the fleeing pirate, grabbed their heads, and let them play head to head, just like that. The two pirates were knocked unconscious. When Qin Ming got rid of the seven pirates, Alvita on the other ship stood on the board with a huge iron rod, and asked loudly, Kebi, you said I am the most powerful person on this sea. What kind of person? You. Dot you are the fattest and ugliest old woman on this sea. The short and puffy Kebi trembled slightly, remembering what Luffy told him before, since he has decided to become the One Piece, then there is nothing wrong with dying for it, cried Alvita. As soon as Kebi said this, the other pirates present were dumbfounded. They looked at the weak child who had been bullied by them before, and now dared to openly confront Alvita. They only felt that they were in a dream, which was unreal. For a long time, in the eyes of these pirates, Kebi has been a timid, stupid and stupid little boy. Two years ago, when Kebi went fishing, he would go wrong on a pirate ship and follow the tragedy of the pirates in Alvita. Lived a life without dignity and enslavement on the ship. But now, Kebi seems to be a different person, not even afraid of Alvita, a violent and ferocious female fat pirate, no wonder those pirates are frightened. After hearing what Kebi said, Alvita became extremely gloomy, with blue veins on her fat forehead, extremely angry. After Kebi said this, his body also trembled uncontrollably, and Luffy beside him laughed loudly, as if he had encountered something happy. What did you say? Alvita yelled at Kebi angrily, the big iron rod in her hand seemed to be hitting Kebi's head at any moment, and his head would explode with one blow. I'm going to join Marine, and put all of you pirates in jail. Kebi clenched his tiny fists and said firmly to Alvita. Do you know what you're talking about? As soon as Alvita asked this, Kirby immediately replied. I know, I will do what I really want to do. First we'll join Marine, and then, and send you to prison. When Kebi plucked up the courage to speak his mind, in the storage room on Alvita's pirate ship, Nami said to Chin Ming with a smile on his face. You look so powerful, I specialize in stealing pirates. The thief of the treasure, my name is Nami, do you want to cooperate with me? I really. Qin Ming looked at his hands, as if he didn't hear Nami's words, and muttered to himself in a low voice. I really. Qin Ming's shoulders trembled slightly, and Nami standing in front of him looked strange for a while, not knowing what was wrong with this man. When Nami wanted to pat Qin Ming on the shoulder and ask for clarification, 
Qin Ming raised his arms and shouted to the sky, I'm no longer the five scumbags. The shout was not earth-shattering, but it was enough to scare the unprepared Nami so dumbfounded on the spot that he froze in place with a dazed expression, as if petrified. In fact, Qin Ming was really excited at this moment. For the first time in his history, he defeated a real pirate, and it was a 1-7 to seven victory, which made him very happy. In fact, the grinning fish that Qin Ming caught earlier was by no means less dangerous than the seven pirates he defeated not long ago, even much higher. However, the sense of achievement and recognition that human beings get from defeating a beast and defeating other people can be said to be incomparable, and Qin Ming's performance at the moment fully proves this point. Since I can defeat those pirates, as long as I continue to train unremittingly, I will definitely become stronger. When Qin Ming thought so, Nami who was standing in front of him turned his clever eyes, and said in his heart, This guy looks like a stunned young man, maybe I can really use his power to achieve my wish. With this in mind, Nami talked to Qin Ming about the cooperation again after coughing lightly. Cooperate. Qin Ming, who finally returned to calm from the excited state, finally noticed the existence of Nami, and after hearing Nami's words, he asked back in doubt. He saw that although the smile on Nami's face was bright, but there seemed to be a little cunning hidden in that seemingly innocent smile, he couldn't help becoming wary. According to Qin Ming's understanding, Nami is not only extremely sharp in navigation skills, but also a woman who is a grandmaster of deception, gambling and stealing skills, and is also very good at acting. How could he be careless before establishing a mutual trust relationship with Nami? However, the first conversation I had with Nami turned out to be about cooperation, which was weird no matter how I thought about it. Qin Ming originally thought that the first conversation between him and Nami could be more pleasant, but looking at the current situation, it seems that they have already begun to calculate each other. That's right, we can go together to steal the treasures of those stupid pirates and take them as our own. If we succeed, I will give you a little more money, and the reward will definitely satisfy you. Don't worry, if you cooperate with me, you will be rewarded. Burn it and turn it over. Nami hurriedly spoke to Qin Ming as if he was afraid that Qin Ming would not agree, with a hint of flattery in his tone. This made Qin Ming doubt Nami's motive even more. Qin Ming knew in his heart that the girl in front of him was a super money fanatic, she would take the initiative to give up the profits, and the other party was a stranger whom he met for the first time, Qin Ming would rather believe that a sow could cross the four oceans than Nami I'll give you a dime. No, I don't want to cooperate with you. Qin Ming simply rejected Nami's request. He thought it would be better to meet with Luffy first, to cooperate with Nami, and it would not be too late to wait for Nami to officially join them. Hey, don't go. Seeing that Qin Ming walked so simply, Nami hurriedly chased after him, and chatted with Qin Ming, by the way, why are you in that treasure chest? And when you came out, you seemed very angry, and there was something wrong with you. Did someone piss you off? I'm in a good mood now, but I'm not angry with anyone. The reason why I was in that box was purely an accident. After thinking for a while, Qin Ming still decided not to tell the truth. If he told Nami that he was forced into the treasure chest by Luffy, it might provoke a burst of ridicule, so forget it. Qin Ming saw that when Nami was leaving, she neatly put all the treasures in the storage room into a bag. There was a knot deep and not shallow wound on her left arm, which was obviously from fighting the pirates before, time was cut. It's just that Nami is only paying attention to the treasure, so she doesn't care about the wound. Although it is not a fatal wound, it is good for you to bandage it. Qin Ming frowned, why don't you treat the wound? This injury is not a problem. After I pack these treasures, the wound will start to heal. My skin is fine and there will be no scars. Nami casually said to Qin Ming that she was concentrating on inspecting the treasures she got, and from time to time knocked a few larger gold nuggets with her hands, seemingly estimating the value of those gold nuggets. Nani, because of the good skin, there will be no scars after injury. I believe you, I am SB. Qin Ming looked at Nami speechlessly, the wound on her left arm was still bleeding. This wound happened to be on the tattoo on Nami's left arm. Seeing the tattoo that looked like a ferocious shark raging in the sea, Qin Ming immediately understood why Nami didn't care about this wound, because the wound was caused by her hatred, on this tattoo, so she selectively ignored it. Tear. Qin Ming tore off his sleeve, 
grabbed Nami who was still obsessed with observing the treasure, and neatly bandaged the wound on her left arm. Nami seemed unaware of Qin Ming's actions, which made Qin Ming fully realize how terrifying this woman's obsession with wealth is. Actually, this kind of wound doesn't need to be treated. It doesn't hurt the muscles and bones, just let it heal naturally. It turned out that Nami didn't know that Qin Ming was bandaging her wound, but she saw that Qin Ming didn't do anything else, but simply helped her treat the wound, so she didn't refuse, but focused on the treasure. You silly girl, you are uneducated, what if the wound becomes inflamed? Qin Ming thought in his heart that when he first started his fishing life, due to poor fishing skills, he often bumped and bumped, and it was inevitable to suffer minor injuries. Also had some experience. The harvest this time is good, let's get out of here quickly. A slightly satisfied expression appeared on Nami's beautiful face, and he quickly tied the bag full of treasures, then picked up the bag and prepared to leave. Is there really any treasure in the treasure chest where you are lying? Nami said while walking out with Qin Ming. Yeah, it contained a lot of gold, but it was all thrown into the sea. Qin Ming said honestly that he was not surprised to see that after Nami sorted out the property looted by the Alveda pirates from other places, he didn't even think about giving him any of it. How can you throw gold into the sea? Tell me which sea area you threw it into, maybe you can fish them up. As soon as Nami heard that there was real gold, her bright eyes immediately turned into symbols of money, and even her voice became much more pleasant. Then she asked, what do you do? Strictly speaking, I can be regarded as a fisherman. As soon as Qin Ming said this, Nami blinked his money eyes and said excitedly to Qin Ming, then you must be very good at salvage, come with me to get all the gold, they must be very eager for me help. Your sister, what I am good at is fishing, not salvage. There is an essential difference between the two. Don't you girl, you can't turn your head when you hear gold. Qin Ming looked at Nami, who was bewildered by money, speechlessly, and felt that this girl had deeply tarnished his professional ethics. When Qin Ming and Nami walked to the deck of the ship, facing Nami's constant questioning, Qin Ming finally couldn't help it. You are really annoying, I don't have time to talk to you now. Looking around, I saw that many places on the boat had signs of love, and the bow was a very cute swan head. Thinking of Alveda's fat, bloated, ugly appearance, coupled with this beautiful and feminine ship, it is simply out of place, which makes Qin Ming feel cold. Just when Qin Ming was about to leave the ship that made him feel uncomfortable with the fastest speed, suddenly something like a big meatball flew towards him in a straight line. What is that? Nami exclaimed. Isn't this Alveda's chunky fat woman? Could it be that she was already kicked away by Luffy, and just happened to hit me? Qin Ming took a closer look and immediately knew what it was that was flying over. He took a quick step back, then gathered all his strength in his right fist, and swung forward violently, get out. Boom. Qin Ming punched the direction of Alveda flew towards him, and then Alveda hit the bow and flew towards the sea in the distance with the cute swan head. During this period, Qin Ming also heard Alveda, who was gradually flying into the distance, shouting at the top of his lungs, you brat wearing a straw hat, and you nasty kid, I won't let you go. Nima, fortunately I reacted quickly, otherwise I would be hit by that fat woman Alveda and fly into the sea together. Qin Ming shook his numb and painful right arm. Earlier he punched Alveda to change the trajectory of his flight, but he used all his strength, and Luffy's random punch could make Alveda fly far away. It can be seen that there is still a gap in strength between him and Luffy. Luffy should be leaving with Kirby, I have to find him as soon as possible. With this in mind, Qin Ming quickened his pace, but at this moment, Nami stopped him. Wait, we still have to go to another place. When Nami saw Alveda just now, she suddenly remembered that Alveda, as a female pirate, although she is so ugly that no one loves her, there must still be a lot of jewelry from before in her captain's cabin. Originally, Nami planned to go to the captain's room after looting the storage room of the pirate ship, but after meeting Qin Ming, he almost forgot such an important matter. Just when Nami couldn't help but stuff the bag full of treasures to Qin Ming, saying that he wanted to find something more, a shell exploded near the ship. Is Marine here, or leave here first? What nonsense, there are still some treasures that have not been obtained, how can you just leave like this? Which is more important, wealth or life? What time is it, and you still think about wealth? Are you an idiot? Of course the treasure is important. 
Seeing Marine's warship firing at them, Qinming started a dispute with Nami. After saying this, Nami ran to the captain's room, wanting to take the treasures that Elvita hid privately into his pocket. Boom. Marine's warships kept firing towards Qin Ming and the others. Some pirates who slipped back to the pirate ship saw Qin Ming standing on the ship's board mountain, and had no time to pay attention to him, and all ran for their lives with their heads in their hands. As for the pirates who didn't have long eyes to attack Qin Ming, they were all sent flying by Qin Ming. Some pirates even jumped directly into the sea, just as a shell flew over, they were directly blown to pieces. With the continuous bombardment of the marine warship, the pirate ship gradually became riddled with holes and began to sink slowly. Inadvertently, Qin Ming heard what the fleeing pirates said about the escaped ship, his heart moved, and he followed those pirates to the place where the escaped ships were released, and dealt with the leading pirates by the way Luz. Seeing that the pirate ship would not last long and would sink at any moment, Qin Ming, who had been waiting for Nami for a while, was about to put down the ship and left alone when he heard Nami's shout, wait for me, follow this. Nami desperately ran towards Qin Ming, throwing a big bag of things over there. Taking the big bag of things in his hand, Qin Ming felt that it was quite heavy. Nami, who jumped on the escape boat, took the bag of things and told Qin Ming that these were all valuable jewelry necklaces and jewelry collected by Alvita, Jem. This made Qin Ming very distressed. He didn't expect Alvita to be so ugly, but he searched for a lot of beautiful decorations and put them in his room. Sure enough, it is a woman's nature to love beauty. Will secretly collect some beautiful jewelry and other things to beautify themselves. Plop. After quickly putting down the escape boat, Chinming and Nami fell back to the sea in the small escape boat. I wondered, where did Luffy go? Normally, shouldn't he show up here on another ship's escape boat? Standing on the small escape boat, Qin Ming looked around, and suddenly found that Luffy and Kebi with pink hair were already far away from here in the boat. Luffy, I'm still here, what are you doing so far? Qin Ming hurriedly grabbed the oar, rowed desperately towards Luffy, and shouted loudly. Ha ha, Qin Ming, I knew you wouldn't die in that big Uzumaki. Just wait, I'll take you over right away. Luffy stood at the stern of the boat, saw that Qin Ming seemed to be safe and sound from a long distance away, couldn't help laughing happily, and stretched his arms, and went towards Qin Ming, obviously wanting to catch Qin Ming. Who is this man? His arms are still so long. Is he your friend? Nami was shocked by Luffy's long arms despite the sound of shelling in his ears. Seeing that Luffy's outstretched hand was very close to him, Qin Ming smiled and turned his head to say something to Nami. Unexpectedly, at this moment, a cannonball happened to aim at Luffy's arm. Seeing that the situation was not good, Luffy had to flick the extended arm to avoid the flying shell. Although Luffy escaped by throwing his arms, unfortunately, Qin Ming was killed because of this. Because when Luffy swung his arm to avoid the cannonball, the long arm changed its direction. It was originally the hand that was grabbing Qin Ming, but in the blink of an eye, it became the hand that was flinging towards Qin Ming. So Qin Ming, who just turned around and wanted to talk to Nami, received such a tragic slap. Snapped. With a very crisp sound, Qin Ming, who was slapped by Luffy inexplicably, jumped forward uncontrollably, just in time to land on Nami. It was nothing at first, but Qin Ming lost his balance in an instant, so he didn't think too much. When he was slapped on Nami by some bad guy, he didn't know whether it was luck or misfortune, and he grabbed Nami. There were two soft lumps. Immediately afterwards, in the endless shelling in the vast sea, there came a voice like the roar of a lion from the east of the river, where are you touching, idiot? In East Blue, a certain sea area, on a small escape boat, Qin Ming, who was rowing the boat, had a big bag on his head. From a distance, it looked like he was wearing a big round hat, which was very conspicuous. Nami, who had suffered an accident before, immediately entered the female Tyrannosaurus state, and without hesitation, she beat up the culprit who hadn't reacted yet. If it weren't for Marine chasing after them and they were running for their lives, someone might really be beaten by Nami's iron fist full of hockey, until even Luffy couldn't recognize him. Anyone who is familiar with Luffy knows that this guy can recognize the real Zoro and the zombie Zoro is the same. With Luffy's superb eyesight, Chin Ming is almost unrecognizable now. You can imagine how badly someone is beaten by Nami today. 
Thinking of Nami with his back turned to him at that time, seductive blush appeared in the base of crystal clear ears. Chin Ming sighed, knowing without thinking, Nami's face must have been very red at that time. Luffy, you fool. Chin Ming had already greeted Luffy thousands of times in his heart. If it wasn't for the sudden slap in the face of that girl, he would never have encountered such a bad luck. Although this can be said to be a blessing in disguise, even so, Chin Ming didn't intend to take advantage of Nami on purpose, it was because of the influence of external factors that this incident happened. Because of this, Chin Ming was violently abused by Nami, and he couldn't blame Nami, who was also a victim, and the person he most wanted to beat up was not here, let alone how aggrieved he felt now. Facing the vast and boundless sea, Chin Ming was full of depression and had nowhere to vent, so he had to row desperately. Could it be that he was going to beat Nami away? If Nami beat Chin Ming into a pig's head for no reason, then Chin Ming would definitely not suffer this loss, even if he really beat Nami to the ground, he would definitely do it. It's a pity that Nami greeted Chin Ming with a violent iron fist this time, but there was a reason for it, and he was a little bit wrong, so he couldn't do anything to Nami. Luffy had missed Chin Ming by stretching his arms earlier, and had already missed the opportunity to take Chin Ming back, because the boat he and Kebi were on was already far away from Chin Ming. In this way, after Chin Ming met Luffy from a distance, and was beaten by Luffy, the god of cheating, Chin Ming separated again. Now Chin Ming is on the same small boat as Nami, and the destination of the two is Shields Town, where Nami said to find the navigation chart of the Grand Line. Looking at Nami who was sitting on the other side, still sulking alone, Chin Ming never dreamed that such a thing happened on the first day he met Nami. On the first day Chin Ming knew Nami, he fully experienced the taste of Nami's terrifying iron fist. It can only be said that he will never forget it in his life. He has lingering fears and never wants to try it again. What was even more unexpected to Chin Ming was that after having this incident with Nami and punishing him severely, Nami's face was flushed, and the first sentence he said to him out of breath was only four words. 100 million berry. There was a slight chill in Nami's agile eyes, and he said to Chin Ming, who hadn't recovered from being beaten by her for a while, with a chilling tone in his tone. Seeing that Nami's delicate and beautiful face was blushing, Chin Ming really didn't know whether she was blushing because she beat someone too fiercely, which caused the blood to surge up, or because she felt ashamed and angry when she was touched her chest earlier of. But it was the four words Nami said that touched the soft place in Chin Ming's heart, making him completely unable to get angry with Nami, because he remembered Nami's life experience. Others may not know the meaning of the 100 million berry that Nami said casually, but Chin Ming, as a traveler, is very clear about what the 100 million berry means to Nami. A 10-year-old girl, in the next 8 years, risked her life countless times for the people she cared about, and kept stealing the treasures of vicious pirates. The little girl who was supposed to be acting like a baby in the arms of her parents forced herself to steal, just to collect 100 million berry to save their lives. It can be said that 100 million berry contains Nami's hope for the future. Although Nami's words aroused Chin Ming's sympathy, he was not stupid enough to admit that he owed this girl 100 million berry just because he didn't. Where do we go now? Chin Ming looked around, looking at the endless sea in front of him, without Nami's instructions, and with his half-baked sailing knowledge, he really didn't know which direction to sail to reach his destination. Under Nami's command, Chin Ming was able to row a small boat to throw away Marine's warship. This allowed Chin Ming to truly appreciate the power of Nami's navigation skills, and at the same time gave him a sense of accomplishment. Don't look at the size of Marine's warship, its appearance is awesome, and its equipment is advanced. With Nami around, I can row a small wooden boat, which can make you far behind. Marine on the chasing warship looked at the small escape boat. There were only two people on board, a man and a woman. But they drove the warship with all their strength, but the small wooden boat was getting farther and farther away from them. After a while, it completely left them far away. All the marines on the warship were dumbfounded. Could it be that the small wooden boat has some special power source? Why can't all the men on the warship row faster than the speed of a single man on the small escape boat? What those marines couldn't accept the most was that the man paddling in the small wooden boat, compared with the orange-haired beauty on the same boat as him, could be said to be a combination of beauty and the beast. No way, at that time Chin Ming had just been beaten up by Nami, and his image was indeed a bit shabby. 
left. Nami's back was simple and straightforward, without even looking at Qin Ming. Qin Ming was also happy that Nami ignored her, so as not to accidentally offend this woman and be beaten again, it would be miserable. At first, Qin Ming was still annoyed about being separated from Luffy. Normally, he should go to the place where Zoro was imprisoned with Luffy now, and then rescue Zoro and let Zoro board the pirate ship, so that there would be three members of their pirate group. But Qin Ming is currently with Nami, so Qin Ming feels in a trance that he has already acted, but following Nami's words, it is reasonable to say that he will still meet that foodie Luffy in the future. With such thoughts, Qin Ming was not in a hurry. After sailing peacefully with Nami for several days, Qin Ming and the others finally came to Shields Town. During this period, Qin Ming and Nami asked questions about navigation as usual, but the two of them didn't say a word. Nami looked at Qin Ming with a strange look, which made Qin Ming completely confused about what this woman was thinking. Although the two were in the same small boat, they were strangers. Qin Ming felt that it was nothing. At this time, he had learned Luffy's heartlessness, and had already completely forgotten the chest attack incident a few days ago. As if nothing happened, he began to exercise non-stop on the boat again. Qin Ming thought so, anyway, Nami asked him for 100 million berry, and didn't ask him to take responsibility. Now that things have happened and the two sides have no intention of further development, it is better to simply forget about it and not mention it, so as not to embarrass the other party. Tired from training, Qin Ming would go to the boat and sleep soundly. Sometimes when he woke up, he would find someone covering him with a quilt. Qin Ming once curiously asked Nami where the quilt came from, but Nami completely ignored him and said nothing. Listen, we're going to infiltrate the marine base and steal the charts of the Great Route. When Nami and Qin Ming parked the small wooden boat, they whispered to Qin Ming. Because Nami was relatively close when she spoke, Qin Ming could smell her faint hair fragrance. Wait, you said there's a marine base here? Qin Ming asked Nami in surprise. Then what's the matter, you won't be frightened when you hear marine, right? Nami still had a cold face, as if Qin Ming owed her hundreds of money, she stared at Qin Ming for a second, and continued, The other day I heard you call Zon Wuskum, what does it mean, it's you is it the previous nickname? Upon hearing Nami's words, Qin Ming immediately became embarrassed. Your sister, what do you mean I was so scared by Marine? Also casually guessing that my past nickname was Zon Wuskum, it is downright slandering. Qin Ming snorted. Don't worry about it, tell me, is there a man named Zoro imprisoned in the Marine base here? At this time, a few passers-by happened to pass by Qin Ming and the others. When they heard Qin Ming's words, they were immediately frightened and took a dozen steps back, as if they had seen a ghost. Idiot, don't mention the name of Zoro, a vicious pirate hunter, here, let's see how you scare those people. Nami accused Qin Ming righteously, then showed a bright smile, and asked the vendors not far away, don't be afraid, we are not bad people, just want to ask, is the colonel in charge of the marine base here the axe? Manka. Originally, there were quite a few residents staying nearby, but after listening to Nami's questioning, none of them remained, with frightened faces on their faces, and they all ran away in a blink of an eye. Those residents found it very strange. Not long ago, a boy wearing a straw hat and a short, pudgy child with pink hair came to inquire about Zoro and Marine Colonel Manka. After a while, two outsiders mentioned these two people are really evil today. Nami's amiable smile was so embarrassingly fixed on his face, Qin Ming almost didn't laugh when he saw it. Silly girl, you told me not to mention Zoro's name, didn't you scare everyone around you? Qin Ming thought so in his heart, and glanced at Nami, who hadn't calmed down yet, with a calm expression. The people here are so weird. It's not surprising that they would be scared when they heard the name of Zoro a vicious pirate hunter, but why did they seem to be even more scared when they mentioned the name of Colonel Marine? Nami said very puzzled, who knows, it's none of our business, don't you want to go to Marine base, then go. Qin Ming shrugged his shoulders and urged Nami on the side. At this moment, he really couldn't wait to go to Marine base and meet Zoro. With Zoro joining, when I sail with Luffy in the future, Luffy should not cheat me anymore, just go and cheat Zoro, a tough guy. With such thoughts in mind, Qin Ming showed a happy smile on the corner of his mouth. Nami who was standing beside him saw a chill rising from the soles of his feet unconsciously. 
Then she made a fist with her right hand, raised it slowly, and shouted coquettishly, don't laughing so disgustingly, you idiot. East Blue, Shields Town, Chinming and Nami have successfully sneaked into the Marine Base. On the way to Marine Base, the two met a cute little girl, but the little girl was crying all the way. Why are you crying so sad, what happened? Who are you and where are your parents? Seeing the little girl who was crying very sadly, Nami hurried forward to ask about the situation. Chin Ming saw that Nami greeted the little girl with slightly swollen eyes from crying with concern on her face. It seemed that she really liked children very much. Oh, my name is Li Jia, I made rice balls for that big brother with great care, but... Dot the result was. Li Jia sobbed non-stop, and as she spoke, she burst into tears. I wanted that big brother to eat the rice balls I made with my own hands, but the rice balls were trampled and dirty by that nasty villain. Big brother can't eat the rice balls I made, I'm so sad. What, who did that kind of thing to you, even bullying such an innocent child, I won't let that guy go. After hearing Li Jia's words, Nami immediately said angrily. The person I want to do this kind of thing is that Colonel Monka's son, Mabel Bell. As soon as Qin Ming said this, Nami was stunned for a moment. Obviously, she didn't expect that the person who bullied the little girl would be Colonel Marine's son. She had thought of giving that guy a good lesson, but now it seems it's really difficult. But soon Nami came back to his senses, and immediately said to Qin Ming, Okay, you rush into the Marine base and beat that guy named Belmaber away. Beat up your sister, you boasted to Xiao Lija yourself, and now you find that this matter is difficult to handle so you call me, you treat me as a SB. Although Qin Ming was also quite indignant about Bell's actions, but if he wanted him to go to Marine Base and beat Bell up as Nami said, he would definitely not do it. After all, Qin Ming is still very self-aware. With his current abilities, it is really impossible for him to overthrow the entire Marine Base by himself. Qin Ming ignored Nami's words, walked up to Li Jia who was sobbing, knelt down, touched Li Jia's little head, and showed a gentle smile. Don't cry, I think the big brother in your mouth, he must I will eat rice balls made by you, and I am very happy. Real. After listening to Qin Ming's words, Li Jia stopped sobbing, raised her head and asked Qin Ming, her big eyes were still full of tears. Of course, that rice ball contains your intentions. Even if the rice ball is dirty, he will still eat it. He will never let down your wishes. He is such a man. When Qin Ming said this, a picture appeared in his mind, a man with a dark green turban tightly tied to a column, chewing big mouthfuls of rice balls that were covered in dust and mud due to being stepped on the ground, I also said that it was delicious. That would be great. Li Jia let out a cheer, and although there were tears running across her immature face, there was a smile on her face. Thank you, big brother and big sister, I have to go back to help my mother's shop, goodbye. Li Jia trotted forward for a while, turned her head and waved to Qin Ming and Nami, and said with a smile. Watching Li Jia's small figure gradually disappear from sight, Nami glanced at Qin Ming, how do you know who Li Jia is talking about? Don't be silly, I don't know who she's talking about, I'm just coaxing her. Qin Ming said this, looked at Nami, and smiled narrowly, seeing that you like children so much, who knows that you can't even coax children, it's really bad. Yes, you will definitely be a qualified father in the future. Nami snorted, and then said to Qin Ming, We can't enter the marine base from the front, we have to go around by another path. When Qin Ming and Nami went to marine base from the small path, Luffy and Kebi appeared at the place where they were just now. When Luffy and Kebi told Li Jia that Zoro had eaten all the rice balls, Qin Ming and Nami sneaked into the marine base and found the Grand Line's nautical chart there. Listen well, when you have a chance to meet that bell, you have to give him a good lesson. Hiding in the corner of the dark corridor, Nami said to Qin Ming while looking around furtively. Why do I have to take action? And, why do I have to listen to you? Seeing that there was no one around, Qin Ming felt a little relieved. He sneaked into the marine base from another place before, but he didn't see Zoro tied to the column. Idiot, you forgot, you owe me 100 million berry. As long as you listen to me, I can consider reducing your debt. Nami said to Qin Ming with a serious face. Nima, when did I admit that I owe you 100 million berry? Qin Ming looked at Nami who was prying the door with a thin wire in silence. Within two seconds, she skillfully pried open the locked door, 
sighed in his heart, and followed her into the room in. The house appeared to be Marine's dormitory, with four bunk beds and several lockers. Nami searched the whole room very quickly, but did not find the nautical chart she wanted, but found a lot of change. The people at Marine Base are really poor. There are less than 300 berry in the four cabinets, which is worse than you. Nami looked helplessly, glanced at Qin Ming, and said very dissatisfied. Nani. Qin Ming's heart trembled, and then he hurriedly touched the pocket of his clothes. Why is all my money gone? Qin Ming's face darkened, and he lowered his voice and asked Nami, when did you steal my money? It's less than a thousand berry, not even enough for interest, but you owe me one hundred million berry, it's not too much for you, right? Nami spread his hands together, and said it as a matter of course. Qin Ming looked at Nami's innocent face, as if it was his fault that Nami stole such a small amount of money, which made him very upset. Don't steal from me again. Qin Ming warned Nami upright and awe-inspiring. Okay, anyway, you are so poor now that you only have clothes left, and there is nothing for me to steal. Nami said indifferently. After wandering around the marine base for nearly 15 minutes, Nami couldn't find what she was looking for. During this period, Qin Ming helped her knock out a few marines, otherwise, their possessions might be exposed. The nautical chart of the Grand Line should be here. Nami glanced around, and slipped into a luxurious looking room with Qin Ming, and there was a big safe inside. Such a luxurious and rich room must be the exclusive room of the domineering Colonel Monka. Qin Ming wandered around in this room, he saw that the decoration of this room was rich and magnificent, very grand, so he thought in his heart. This safe is quite advanced, it's not easy to open. Nami studied the big safe in the corner, and said with some headaches. Can't you open it? Qin Ming walked up to Nami and asked. Of course I can open this safe, but it will take some time. After Nami finished talking to Qin Ming, he was ready to seriously study the safe. At this moment, there was a click, and someone opened the door that was closed tightly. Both Qin Ming and Nami's expressions changed. Nami hurriedly hid behind Qin Ming, Qin Ming's heart tightened, and when he wanted to take action against the person who suddenly broke into the room, he saw that the person who came into the room was actually Luffy wearing a straw hat. Will there be the three swords I'm looking for here, huh? Luffy, who was helping Zoro find the sword, opened the door while talking to himself. After entering the room, he was also stunned when he saw the situation inside. When Qin Ming saw Luffy, he was agitated for a moment, and then remembered that he had been abused by Luffy before, so he rolled up his sleeves, thinking that he would beat the up first, otherwise it would be hard to get over it. Hate in the heart. When Qin Ming walked towards Luffy aggressively, Luffy jumped over happily when he saw Qin Ming. Under Qin Ming's astonished eyes, Luffy gave Qin Ming a big hug, hugged Qin Ming tightly, and shouted excitedly, That's great. Qin Ming, I've been worried about you since I separated from you last time. If something really happens to you, then I will be so sad that I won't be able to eat meat for several months. Qin Ming's bones ached from being hugged by Luffy, which showed how tightly Luffy hugged him. But also because of this, Qin Ming could feel Luffy's joy when he saw him, it was completely from the bottom of his heart, Luffy was really worried about him. Otherwise, Luffy would not have behaved like this when he suddenly saw Qin Ming who was safe and sound. Nami saw that Qin Ming and Luffy hugged so tightly, so tight that even she felt that there seemed to be nothing in this world that could separate them. Normally, a man would hug another man, only that kind of special relationship and firm friendship can drive two men to hug, this is a romance that only men can understand. There can be many reasons for a man to hug a woman, but as long as the hug between a man and a man is not gay, there is only one reason, because I regard you as a real brother. As a man, you may have many friends, but you may spend your whole life, and you will never meet a friend who can embrace you calmly. I have to say, this is the sadness of a man. It's great that you're all right, so we can have fun sailing together again. Luffy said very sincerely, he finally stopped hugging Qin Ming. Ha ha, how could something happen to me? In an instant, Qin Ming felt a surge of passion, which made his resentment towards Luffy much less, to the point where it could be ignored. By the way, who is she? Luffy glanced at Nami curiously, and asked Qin Ming. It's you, you made me miserable that time. Nami seemed to think of something, her pretty face blushed, and she said to Luffy, her tone was rather indignant. Did I really hurt her? 
Luffy asked Qin Ming with a puzzled expression. Well, you still hurt me. Qin Ming nodded and said to Luffy very sincerely, if Luffy hadn't slapped him at that time, he wouldn't have been severely beaten by Nami. What, I actually killed you at the same time? Luffy moved his eyes between Qin Ming and Nami and said with a shocked face. Qin Ming nodded again, thinking in his heart, if you apologize, forget about the past. How unlucky you two are, to be killed by me together, ha 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 ha. Luffy covered his belly and smiled happily, but Nami became much more gloomy, and even Qin Ming's mouth twitched. Paralyzed, I'm so naive, I expect him to apologize, I'm a fool. Qin Ming rolled up his sleeves again, raised his fist in tacit agreement with Nami, and beat up Luffy who was still smiling happily. Bang bang, puff. For a long time, both Qin Ming and Nami were out of breath. There was no way, Luffy was too resistant to beating, they couldn't hold it back, and after beating for a while, they were so tired that they were panting. You give me a good reflection. Qin Ming folded his hands on his chest, panting heavily, and said to Luffy who was lying on the ground, beaten so badly. Sorry, I really didn't mean to harm you. Luffy with a face like a pig finally said something human. After Qin Ming and Nami gave Luffy a good lesson, they finally let out a bad breath. Both of them felt refreshed and felt much better. As for the one who was beaten, even though he sincerely apologized to Qin Ming and Nami, he still hasn't figured out when he rescued Qin Ming and Nami and made them have to beat them up. Only to relieve my anger. After that, Luffy told Qin Ming that he was looking for knives for Zoro and asked Qin Ming if he had seen the three knives he was looking for. Noah Zoro, he is a notorious pirate hunter in East Blue. It is rumored that he is like a bloodthirsty tiger, looking for rewards everywhere on the sea. People call him a monster in human skin. Cruel and cruel, why do you still help him? Nami asked Qin Ming and Luffy very puzzled. What nonsense are you talking about? I think he is very good, and what kind of person he is, I will judge for myself, I don't need your opinion. Luffy said to Nami in a very serious tone which was rare. It turned out that after Luffy told Li Jia that Zoro had eaten the rice ball that Bell had stepped on the ground, he learned from Li Jia that Zoro was willingly captured by Marine to protect her and her family. Bellmaber often walks the streets with a very vicious big dog, which is very much loved by Bellmaber and spoiled. Relying on Marine's protection, one person and one dog do whatever they want in Shield's town, causing trouble everywhere. That day Bell Mabel was walking the dog recklessly on the street as usual, and little Lija was almost killed by the vicious dog raised by Bell Maber in the street. Fortunately, Zoro took the shot and cut the vicious dog in half with a knife, saving her. Lee Ja. But Zoro also pissed off Bell Meber. Bell may have nothing to do with Zoro, but he despicably uses Lija's family to threaten Zoro. If Zoro doesn't follow his advice, he will order Marine to execute Lija's family after Zoro leaves Shield's town. So Zoro and Bell made an agreement. As long as he is tied to the square of Marine Base without eating or drinking for a month, if he is still alive, then Bell will not trouble Li Jia's family again. At the same time, the grievances with Zoro will be written off. But later Luffy found out that three weeks after Zoro was tied up in the square of Marine Base, Bell saw that Zoro was still alive, so he didn't plan to abide by the agreement with Zoro, and wanted to execute Zoro publicly the day after tomorrow so as to make an example of others, making the residents of the town even more afraid to resist the rule of their father and son. Especially Bell, who proudly called Zoro a Warcraft idiot on the street, made Luffy furious. Because Luffy thought of Zoro, who was ignorant of Bell's rebellious behavior, and was still struggling, thinking that as long as he survived for more than a week, the grievances with Bell could be satisfactorily resolved. In the end Luffy couldn't take it anymore, rushed over and punched Bell who was still talking about his despicable plan, and knocked him flying. As a result, when this guy fled in embarrassment, he said cruelly to make Luffy hate and finally, ready to die. But Luffy turned a deaf ear to Bellmaber's words, he felt that such a useless and despicable person as Bellmaber was not worth another punch from him. But when Luffy heard Xiao Lija said that it was very enjoyable to see Bell Mabel being beaten, this girl immediately said that she would have punched Bell Mabel a few more times if she knew it earlier. When Luffy was beating Bell Mabel, all the residents of the nearby town were kneeling on the ground. This was taken from Bell Mabel's lust. 
It can also be seen that on weekdays, Mabo Bell relied on how domineering his father was the colonel of the marine base here. In this way, after learning the reasons and consequences of Zoro being imprisoned in marine base, Luffy finally decided to invite Zoro to join him, and then slipped into marine base to help Zoro find his three knives. Stop arguing, I support him too, sometimes rumors are not necessarily true. Chin Ming glanced at Luffy, then turned to Nami. I knew you would have no objection. Luffy grinned and said to Chin Ming. Whatever you want, these are none of my business. Nami snorted softly, pushed Chin Ming and Luffy away, and walked straight to the big safe in front. What are you going to do? Do you want to open this box? Luffy watched Nami curiously looking at the safe, looking interested. Of course, this is very difficult. You must not be able to do it. Don't bother me. Nami said to Luffy very rudely. What? How could I not be able to do such a simple thing? The single-celled Luffy looked dissatisfied, he shook his arm, came to the safe, raised his fist, and hit it with a hammer. There was a loud bang. Nami stared dumbfounded at the crumbling safe that Luffy had punched. Making such a loud noise, unless those marines are all deaf, otherwise, someone will definitely come to check the situation here later. Chin Ming complained incessantly, just now he wanted to stop Luffy from doing stupid things, but it was too late. See, I didn't brag, just opened it casually. Luffy laughed loudly, and said very proudly, he didn't notice that Nami's face had gradually become ugly. You idiot, what if the nautical chart inside is damaged? The dark-faced Nami punched Luffy who was still smiling happily without hesitation, and immediately beat Luffy to the ground. Hurry up and take out the contents inside, we have to evacuate here as soon as possible. Chin Ming looked towards the door vigilantly, and urged Nami, if he didn't have time now, he really wanted to beat Luffy again. We still have to help Zoro find a knife, why are you leaving here in such a hurry? As soon as Luffy said this, several marines broke into the room, saw Chin Ming and the others inside, and immediately asked, who are you, thieves who sneaked in here? How dare you come to marine base to steal something, what a daring thief. Three marines rushed in, and one marine ran away in a hurry, apparently to inform others. Don't talk nonsense, I'm not a thief, listen up, I'm going to be. Before Luffy finished speaking, Chin Ming rushed towards the three marines, knocking them down in an instant. It's this time, and you're still talking to them. Chin Ming said to Luffy, don't you still want to find Zoro's knife? Then hurry up, if it is too late, things may change. You are really impatient, okay, then I will go, and we will meet up in the empty field outside later. Luffy snapped the straw hat on her head, then walked out of the room with a whoosh, and disappeared from Chin Ming's sight in the blink of an eye. Chin Ming was speechless for a while, and I didn't say I wouldn't act together with you, why are you running so fast, who is the impatient one? Why are you standing there? You have to leave quickly. Chin Ming vaguely heard the movement above, which seemed to be serious. Seeing Nami standing still, he couldn't help but stepped forward to have a look. The nautical chart is mine, buggy, it's beautifully accepted. Chin Ming saw that on the top of the blueprint Nami held in his hand, there was such a sentence written on it. Under the jargon, there was also a big skull logo. In the middle of the skull, there was a very conspicuous big red nose. This is not a nautical chart, this sign is. Nami looked at the drawing in his hand in astonishment, and muttered to himself, Captain Buggy, Buggy who is known as the Immortal. Having said that, Nami squeezed the blueprint in his hand tightly, with a serious expression, and a firm look in his bright eyes, as if he had secretly made up his mind. That fooled red nose really sent his men to steal the nautical chart hidden here first. Chin Ming cursed inwardly, looking at Nami's appearance, he seemed to want to go to Buggy's place alone and steal back the nautical chart she wanted. Let's go. While talking to Chin Ming, Nami hurried to the door. Seeing this, Chin Ming had no choice but to quickly follow. Along the way, he met a dozen or so marines. With Chin Ming's current skills, it would not be a problem to deal with them. When Chin Ming and Nami walked out of the marine base and came to the empty square, the marines who tried to intercept them were overthrown by Chin Ming. It was just beyond Chin Ming's expectation that as soon as he and Nami rushed out of the marine base, they felt their eyes dim. When they looked up, they saw a huge bust falling from above them. What's this? Nami was shocked and dumbfounded on the spot. Flash! 
Chin Ming hugged Nami who hadn't been slowed down and hid to the right. When he saw the things that fell from above, he knew that it was a huge stone statue of a human body that Colonel Menka ordered people to make according to his appearance, but now the stone statue it has been broken down the middle, so it goes without saying that it was Luffy who made it. Moreover, Chin Ming also heard Colonel Menka's roar from above. Catch him, I'm going to kill this brat wearing a straw hat with my own hands. You actually destroyed the stone statue that I took so many years to complete, I'm determined. Don't let him go. Boom. The huge half stone statue fell to the ground and became shattered. Chin Ming hugged Nami, and both of them fell to the ground, many of them burst out from the shattered stone statue, like bullets, and rushed toward them. Although Chin Ming reacted quickly, he hugged Nami beside him in time to avoid the huge stone statue that fell from the sky, but in a hurry, he was still hugging someone, how could he hide far away, it would be good if he could save his life. Chin Ming turned over and pressed Nami under his body, and all the broken stones shot towards them hit his back heavily. How embarrassing, I didn't expect those little stones to hurt me so much. How did Chin Ming know that some of the small gravels that hit his back were sharp stones, plus the strong counter-impact force produced by the stone statue when it fell on the ground, made the small gravels flying out of the stone statue with speed like a bullet. Such a powerful stone hit Chin Ming's defenseless back, and he was not made of iron, so it's surprising that it didn't hurt. At this time, Nami, who was being pressed by Chin Ming, was surprisingly quiet. She lowered her head slightly and hid in Chin Ming's arms. Her face was reddish and her heart was beating. She is not an idiot, how could she not know what Chin Ming did just now? It was done entirely out of protection for her. For some unknown reason, Nami's hand touched Chin Ming's back unconsciously. Chin Ming noticed Nami's movements, and for a moment he couldn't figure out what Nami wanted to do. With his current posture of pressing down on Nami, it was harmonious enough. Just as he was about to get up, Nami's hand was placed on his back. Suddenly, a strange feeling arises spontaneously. Looking at the reddish and slightly shy Nami, Chin Ming's eyes widened and his breathing became a little short. He looked terrified, as if he had seen a ghost. I made a fool of myself, this girl must have mischievous intentions towards me, right? Probably not, I'm not so handsome that everyone loves it, my flowers are blooming, and my strength is very common at present. How could she fall in love with me? I must be thinking too much. At this moment, Chin Ming's mind was full of messy thoughts, only to hear Nami's surprisingly gentle voice, and said in a soft voice, for the sake of saving me just now, you owe me an extra 200 million yuan. Bailey is fine. Nani, things really are not what I thought before, but I owe you more money after saving you, what's the reason? At this moment, Chin Ming's whole body was in a mess, he couldn't understand what Nami was thinking at this moment. How are you wet? Nami's face suddenly changed, and the shy look like a little woman disappeared completely, which made Chin Ming seriously suspect that he was hallucinating just now. I'm very normal, and I'm not yet emotional. If you want to get wet, you get wet first. Chin Ming thought so in his heart, and heard Nami continue to say, your back seems to be bleeding. Hearing what Nami said, Chin Ming immediately felt a burning pain in his back, and when he touched it with his hand, he felt wet and sticky. At first glance, the palm of the hand that touched the back was red and red. Nima, I'm really wet, and there seems to be a lot of blood on my back. Chin Ming thought sadly, feeling that his back hurts badly when he moved his body, it seems that the injury is not serious. At this moment, Chin Ming heard Menka's deep voice, how dare you do anything wrong on Lousy's territory? Why, you pirate hunter, do you think you want to carry out a coup with that straw hat kid? I've always fought alone, unlike a guy like you who only relies on the army to show off. Zoro, who was tied to the round wooden stake, looked at Menka and his men, and said word by word. Noah Zoro, don't underestimate me. With your strength, it's not worth mentioning in front of my power. Monka touched the giant axe inlaid in his right arm, and then ordered to the marine soldier holding the gun, get ready. Zoro looked at the black muzzles pointed at him. I. I must not just die here. Zoro suddenly thought of a 13 or 14 year old girl with superb swordsmanship, a heroic figure, and a beautiful blue hair who said to him, you still haven't made much progress, Zoro. Chin Ming, who was behind the huge stone statue, saw that Zoro was about to be executed by shooting. 
Kebi was obviously shot by the gun, leaving a lot of blood on his right shoulder, so he stayed where he was and did not dare to move. But Luffy was nowhere to be seen. Chin Ming was so anxious that he didn't have time to think about it. He picked up a small stone and threw it at Menka's head. Call out. The stone thrown by Chin Ming accurately hit the head of the tall and tall Colonel Menka, causing a small bag to bulge. Who, who is so bold, dare to throw stones at me? Menka, who was hit on the head by a stone, fell into a state of rage. A marine soldier found Chin Ming's location and immediately reported to him. Report to the colonel, there are still two people hiding behind that stone statue. What did you say? Monka looked in the direction that Marine pointed, and he saw a man and a woman hiding behind his broken stone statue. He said angrily, traitors appear one after another, I will kill them all. Tell your useless men to come and catch me, stupid. A little Marine colonel, really thinks he is Uranus lousy, what a joke. Chin Ming spat out in an unrefined manner, and shouted at Menka in disdain. Obviously, Chin Ming's words completely irritated Menka who always valued power very much and thought he was extremely good. He opened his eyes wide and ordered to the marine soldiers, catch that kid for me, I want to use this take the axe and chop him to pieces. Are you an idiot? You were obviously injured, and you deliberately drew marine's attention. Nami saw all the marine soldiers rushing towards them, and even the angry Menka walked over slowly, and said anxiously to Chin Ming. Shut up, leave this to me, you stay away first. Chin Ming pushed Nami hard so that the woman would stay away from here quickly. If he hadn't thrown stones at Menka just now, then Zoro would really be finished. Luffy, you fool, what a mess, why is it that at the critical moment, there is no one behind? When Chin Ming was wrestling with those marine soldiers, Zoro, who was tied to the column, asked Kirby, who is that man and why did you save me? I think he's another companion that Mr. Luffy mentioned to me earlier, and I'm seeing him for the first time. Kebi clutched the wound on his right shoulder, glanced at Chin Ming, and said. Oh. Zoro stared at Chin Ming intently, seeing that he is injured, he seems to be seriously injured, so he still dares to provoke Marine, how courageous he is. Surround me around the base. You must not let the kid in the straw hat and this person who dared to offend me with small stones slip away. Menka walked slowly towards Chin Ming, and loudly instructed his subordinates to do things there. Chin Ming is not having a good time now, it can even be said that it is quite hard. Firstly, the injury on Chin Ming's back was aching, which prevented him from displaying his normal strength. Secondly, the marine soldiers who besieged him were either holding sabers or guns in their hands, while he was fighting with his hands empty. The third reason is that there are many people in marine, the so-called two fists are hard to fight with four hands. Chin Ming is already in a bad state at present, and it will be even harder to fight. If it was just about 10 ordinary marine soldiers, Chin Ming gritted his teeth and would have wiped them out. But now Chin Ming is facing at least 30 marines. What makes him feel the most painful is that there are marines with guns who shoot at him from a long distance, and he has no time to hide. Get in the mood to fight these marines. Paralyzed, bully me unarmed. Chin Ming dodged left and right quickly, dodging bullets, and complained in his heart. In fact, when he went to sea with Luffy, he also considered what weapon he should use to fight the enemy in the future. But before he had time to think about these things, he first encountered the dilemma of fighting with bare hands. Well, if this continues, if I don't get killed by these marines, I'll be exhausted sooner or later if I keep running like this. Chin Ming turned around quickly, beat a marine soldier who was chasing him unconscious, then turned over, jumped to the left, and continued to move quickly. The reason for this is to prevent marine who is holding a gun from a distance, from the opportunity to target him. After all, unlike Luffy, Chin Ming is immune to bullets. If he eats a few more bullets, he might die. Chin Ming's mind was spinning rapidly, thinking about how to get out of the predicament he solved. Depending on the situation, I can only go around to the marine soldiers holding guns and kill them first. Soon, Chin Ming made up his mind to kill those marine soldiers who fired guns in the back first. Just like that, Chin Ming ran quickly in the marine base square with a width of hundreds of meters, made a big circle, and gradually approached the marine soldiers holding guns in the back row. Previously, under Chin Ming's care, Nami had already been hiding far away. She hid in the dark, and seeing Chin Ming fighting desperately there, 
and getting into danger many times, and almost being shot by a knife, she was terrified. Nami bit her lips lightly, her brows were furrowed, and she wanted to rush out to help Chin Ming several times, but in the end she didn't, because she remembered the people in her hometown who were still waiting for her, so she couldn't just rush out to help Chin Ming openly. Idiot, who would challenge Marine openly and make trouble for Marine. Nami cursed inwardly, feeling very anxious in her heart. She vaguely saw that Chin Ming's back was bleeding even more. Perhaps it was because Chin Ming ran there nonstop, which accelerated the blood circulation, and the wound on his back was not healed, so the bleeding continued. At this time, Chin Ming had successfully rushed into the Marine soldiers who were shooting at him in the rear, messing up the formation of those Marines. Once Chin Ming got close, the dozen or so Marines with guns were no longer a threat. After a while, they were all knocked down by Chin Ming, unable to get up for a while. Untie the rope quickly, and I will help you. Not far away, Zoro, who was tied to a round wooden stake, called out to Chin Ming. I really want to save you, but I have to let those Marines give me a chance. Although Chin Ming dealt with the Marine soldier with the gun, he was still in a state of besieged and beaten, unable to get away to help Zoro untie the rope. Kebi, who suffered a gunshot wound to his right shoulder and could barely use one hand, tried to untie Zoro's rope many times, but couldn't do it at all. Have, looking at Marine who was looking towards him with a raised knife in front of him, Chin Ming had a flash of inspiration, punched Marine in the stomach, and snatched Marine's knife. Following Chin Ming, he threw the knife at Zoro. In that case, the knife should have cut the rope binding Zoro. When Chin Ming thought so, he heard Zoro yelling at him, You fool, what kind of plane are you doing? Nani. Chin Ming narrowly avoided the attacks of the three marines, and looked back hastily, only to see that the knife he threw just now did not cut off the rope on Zoro's body, but injured Zoro instead, look at Zoro's left arm the blood is so bright red. Feel sorry. Chin Ming honestly apologized to Zoro after he brought down the marines who besieged him. Apologizing is useless. Zoro is quite tragic now. He was tied to a log post and starved for three weeks. Before he started fighting the enemy, he was injured by his own people first. He didn't think about cutting down Chin Ming. Good tempered. Chin Ming also felt embarrassed. He was quite accurate in throwing stones, but the accuracy of throwing knives was much worse. He never expected that on the first day he met Zoro, he would cheat Zoro and even throw Zoro it made him feel very embarrassed to see Hong. Chin Ming, who felt guilty for Zoro, did not dare to look at him for the time being, and could only focus on the marine soldiers who were stalking him. Dang Clang. Chin Ming chuckled, took the two sabers he had just snatched in his hands, and collided them hard, making a crisp sound of metal clashing. Can he use a sword? Seeing Chin Ming holding a knife in both hands, Zoro asked Kebi in surprise. I have no idea. Kebi said honestly that he has completely given up on helping Zoro untie the rope now, because of the gunshot wound, which made him very weak. It is not bad to be able to stand, but it is very rare to want to use force. Colonel Monka, who was standing tens of meters away from the outside battle, also saw that Kebi could not help Zoro untie the rope, so he temporarily let him go. Anyway, in his eyes, Kebi was just an insignificant role. However, seeing that Chin Ming had a weapon in his hand, and more and more of his subordinates were defeated by Chin Ming, Menka's eyes became more gloomy. What are you doing, have you forgotten my order? I want you to catch that nasty boy in front of me, and then use this giant axe in my hand to tear him to pieces. Monka held up the giant axe embedded in his right arm, and cursed at the marine soldiers. Colonel, he is too strong and difficult to deal with. A marine soldier came to Monka and saluted tremblingly. He was punched by Chin Ming a few times before, and he felt pain all over his body. It is his limit to be able to stand up and speak now. My subordinates don't need people like you who only marvel at the strength of the enemy, but don't know how to fight. Under my supreme power, no matter who they are, they are weak and powerless. After Menka finished speaking, he killed the marine soldier who was saluting him with one axe. The marines who besieged Chin Ming turned pale when they saw Colonel Menka's actions, but they dared not speak out, so they continued to attack Chin Ming. Since you have said that you are so great, then stand up and fight with me. Hide behind and yell, even if you talk wildly, you are just a coward. 
After avoiding several marine attacks, Qin Ming raised his knife with his right hand to point at Menka, and said slowly. In fact, Qin Ming could obviously feel a little dizzy now, knowing that he might not be able to last long, so he thought of a quick solution. As long as Menka was knocked down, the matter would be resolved more easily. That's why Qin Ming took the initiative to declare war on Menka. You little brat with no reputation and status, dare to challenge me. Who do you think I am? I am the excellent marine colonel, Menka the Axe. Menka stared at Qin Ming, and slowly walked towards Qin Ming. You all back down, I want this kid to understand that in this world, under my power, no one can resist me. Quote. Idiot, just waiting for you to fight me one on one. Qin Ming thought of Ichiraku, if he hadn't provoked Menka just now, but had rushed up to trouble Menka, then he might have faced the siege of Menka and Marine at the same time. The marines who had besieged Qin Ming earlier, under Menka's order, retreated, leaving an open space for Qin Ming and Menka to fight. His grandma, those marines were really cautious, and they took Zoro so seriously. Qin Ming secretly paid attention to Zoro, and Qin Ming was speechless. Qin Ming's back was already bloodline Madara Madara, it was shocking to see, he was too lazy to talk nonsense, he shook his head to wake up his slightly dizzy head, and took the lead in attacking Menka. I saw Qin Ming holding a saber in one hand and slashing at Menka, but none of them hit him. After watching for a while, Zoro couldn't help shouting to Qin Ming, is this what you call using a sword? Nima, I don't know how to use a sword, but it's better than fighting against Menka who has a big axe with nothing in his hand. When Qin Ming heard Zoro's words, he just wanted to reply to Zoro, when he saw the huge axe on his right arm coming towards him, and he hurriedly raised his knife to meet him. Nail. The two knives in Qin Ming's hands were chopped off by Meng Ka on the spot. Now Zoro, who is a swordsman, didn't see it. He resolutely scolded Qin Ming. You are ashamed to a swordsman for being cut off by the enemy. Shame on your sister, I didn't say I was a swordsman, why are you so excited? Qin Ming casually threw away the two broken sabers in his hand, and jumped to avoid Menka's axe. Then Qin Ming stepped on the axe on Menka's right arm and kicked Menka in the jaw. I stumbled, it hurt me to death. Qin Ming, who kicked Menka's jaw hard, felt as if his right calf had been kicked by something extremely hard. It turned out that Menka's jaw was made of steel. You die for me. Menka raised the huge axe on his right arm again, aimed at Qin Ming who had not yet fallen back to the ground, and struck. It's you who will fall first. Qin Ming turned over in a volley, resisting the discomfort in his body, and kicked Menka heavily on the bridge of the nose before being hit by Menka's giant axe. Qin Ming hit Menka with a heavy foot on the bridge of his nose, and his body immediately retreated uncontrollably. When he retreated with his head tilted to the sky, a bright red parabola flew out of his nose, down, become extremely conspicuous. Why hasn't Luffy come out yet? Could it be that the butterfly effect created by me joining the Straw Hat Pirates has finally appeared? Qin Ming panted slightly. He was indeed a little tired after repeated hard battles. Looking at Colonel Menka who kept bleeding from his nose, the severe pain from his back made his consciousness gradually blurred. Blood. Menka stretched out his hand and touched his nose, which was collapsed and deformed by Qin Ming's kick. His hand was covered with blood from his nose. The bright red color made his eyes burst open, and he shouted at Qin Ming angrily. You little brat, how dare you hurt me? Did you see it? The colonel was kicked and injured by that kid. I didn't expect the colonel to have the upper hand. The marines who were watching the battle not far away all looked at each other with incredulous expressions on their faces. What's so great about hurting you, I'm not proud at all. Qin Ming panted heavily, spit out a mouthful, resisted the dizziness in his head, and said to the furious Menka. What he said was very disrespectful, but it was the truth. If Qin Ming was complacent after injuring Menka, what would he do in the future when he faced enemies who were much stronger than Menka? After Qin Ming went through a series of violent movements for the back injury, the wound had already become bloody and bloody. Not only did it fail to stop the bleeding, but it actually made the injury worse. This is normal. After Qin Ming was injured, he fought against Marine without any treatment for the wound. Now he is fighting against Menka, which makes him feel even more strenuous. Although Manka, as a marine colonel, might be a bit watery, he was still much stronger than those marine miscellaneous soldiers. Well, if this continues, I may really die here. 
As soon as this idea came up, Qin Ming felt a panic that he had never experienced before. It was an innate instinct of human beings, the fear of death. Leave a few people to watch over the pirate hunter, and let the others go with me. I will not chop him into meat paste, who has repeatedly offended my authority, today, I will not be human. Monka's bloodshot eyes were full of evil spirit, and he ordered to the surrounding marines. It's really shameless. Knowing that you are not an opponent, you use such a dirty trick. If you are still a man, you should go one on one with him to complete this duel. Zoro, who was tied to the column, really wanted to cut down Menka. He also saw that Qin Ming's condition was not very good, and he knew that Menka must have seen the clues, so he ordered Marine to besiege Qin Ming with him. Such a lowly method made him very contemptuous. Kebi next to Zoro, his puffy body trembled slightly, his fists clenched, and his face was a little confused. Is this the Marine who always claims to be righteous? This is the Marine I yearn for. You can just scream there, Noah Zoro, after I kill that kid, I will execute you immediately. Only you garbage floating on the sea will believe in the so called fairness duel. Monka glanced at Zoro and let out a sneer. What did you say? Zoro's face darkened, and his eyes gradually turned cold. Those eyes, like an extremely ferocious beast staring at its prey, made people shudder. Menka just glanced at Zoro, and suddenly his whole body felt cold, and he felt the cold into his body, which was very uncomfortable. He secretly said in his heart, as expected of a man called a monster, his eyes are really scary, but under my power, you also have to obediently be a sheep and let me slaughter you. There's no need to talk nonsense to this kind of person. How can a person who has been corrupted by power still be arrogant? How can such a person have the courage to fight with others upright? I didn't think he would be honest from the beginning if you really fight me, things will develop like this, I am not surprised at all. When Qin Ming said this, he felt that the uneasiness in his heart was much less, he suddenly laughed, looked at the marine and Menka who were slowly swarming up, and asked loudly, only you, want to kill me. What do you think I have been training myself for the past month? Do you think I went to sea just on a whim? Do you think I will die easily? If you want to kill me, you are worthy. Five shouts in succession, one higher than the other, and the aura emanating from Qin Ming also became stronger and stronger with each of the shouts, and actually shocked the marines present. You dare to speak hard when you are about to die, what are you doing in a daze, let me do it. After regaining his composure, Menka immediately issued an order to Marine who was still in a daze. He was very annoyed. Just now, Qin Ming, who seemed to be seriously injured, even frightened him with his aura. Up. This made it difficult for Menka, who had always considered himself a Marine elite, to accept that a small person with no status actually made him feel terrified in an instant. Ah, Qin Ming's loud shout seemed to have dispelled a lot of the timidity in his heart. He pulled himself together, gathered all the strength in his body, and rushed towards Marine on his own initiative. At this moment, Qin Ming suddenly understood that when he decided to go to sea with Luffy, he was destined to encounter countless dangers. If he could not overcome the fear of death and was dominated by it instead, then he was really doomed. That's why Qin Ming put his mind to one side, decided not to think about anything, and gave it a go with all his strength. Ever since he followed Luffy out to sea, Qin Ming has always believed that he might encounter some dangers, but he would never be in danger of his life, because Luffy and Zoro are very reliable people, if he is really in trouble, then the both of them can help him too. But looking at the current situation, Luffy was nowhere to be seen, and Zoro could not fight for the time being, so he could only rely on him. This made Qin Ming realize for the first time that if he didn't work hard, he would really die if he didn't dare to fight. It can be said that this is Qin Ming's first time facing a dangerous situation after joining the Straw Hat Pirates, and he will die if he is not careful. This made him feel clearly for the first time in his life that Shinigami's breath was so close to him. If I shrink back here, then my adventure, my voyage, can really only end there. Since I can't escape, then I can only fight. Qin Ming knew that if he turned around and ran away without hesitation, he still had a great chance of surviving, but if he did so, Menka would order Marine to execute Zoro, and his previous efforts would be in vain. And if Qin Ming really chooses to run away, such actions are no different from abandoning his companions at a critical moment. Because of the fear of death, you leave your companions in danger and ignore them. 
This kind of behavior is despicable and shameless. Qin Ming never thought of himself as a noble person, and even at this moment, facing Shinigami's call, he was still very disturbed. But if he chooses to abandon his companions here and protect his life wisely, even if Zoro survives by chance, will he still have the face to stay on the same boat with Luffy and the others, and have the face to claim to be a member of the Straw Hat Pirates? If Zoro is not tied up now and can display his do fighting ability normally, then Qin Ming might really run away. Anyway, with Zoro's ability, he is definitely fine. He might as well find a place to recuperate earlier. It's a pity that Zoro is currently tightly tied to some round wooden stake. To put it bluntly, a war scum can kill him. Under such circumstances, how can Qin Ming leave him alone? Most importantly, where did Luffy die? It's just that Qin Ming didn't have time to think about it now. He rushed into the crowd of marines, punched non-stop, and tried his best with each punch, hoping to beat up those marines with just one blow. He's crazy. A marine with a saber in his hand was so frightened by Qin Ming's fearless force that his legs went limp. As soon as he yelled this, Qin Ming punched him in the front and beat him. The whole person flew out and hit several marines behind. I'm ready to die here. If you want to take my head, you are also ready to be beaten by me, right? Taking advantage of the situation, Qin Ming snatched the saber in Marine's hand, and slashed at Menka in front of him. Clang! Menka swung the huge axe inlaid on his right arm, and cut off the saber in Qin Ming's hand. Seeing Qin Ming's eyes that were as sharp as blades shone with a cold light, he took a step back unconsciously, why do you you can still stand, why don't you fall down? Raising the huge axe on his right arm, Menka yelled loudly, and slashed at Qin Ming. Boom! Menka's huge axe hit the ground like a huge boulder, splitting the ground open. Qin Ming jumped up, narrowly dodged Menka's axe blow, followed him with a fist with his right hand, and slapped Menka hard on the right face. I only went out to see when my life was blocked. You can only rely on power how could someone beat me? Boom! Menka was beaten by Qin Ming so that he flew out in a straight line, followed by a few yellow teeth in his mouth. His whole body was like a cannonball, and he fell heavily to the ground about 20 meters away. Bursts of dust. Block your life. Kebi stared blankly at Qin Ming's back, and he remembered that Luffy had said similar words to him before, in order to become the One Piece King, even if he sacrificed his life for it, he would not hesitate to do so. It turns out that he and Mr. Luffy are on the same road, no wonder he is Mr. Luffy's companion. Kobe was talking to himself in a low voice, and what he said was heard by Zoro who was tied to the column next to him. It's a pity that he is not a swordsman. Fortunately, he is not a swordsman. Zoro looked at Zoro, and suddenly said such a sentence without thinking. Colonel Monka was, beaten to the ground by him. A terrible man, he looks like he is dying, but he still has such great power. The marines around looked at the precarious Chin Ming who was about to fall down at any moment, None of them dared to step forward, instead they all took three steps back. What are you doing, without my order, you dare to retreat. When the marines surrounding Qin Ming were retreating, an extremely gloomy voice came out. Menka squatted on the ground, spat out a few mouthfuls of blood, stood up slowly, and walked towards Qin Ming step by step. His face was covered with blood, making him look even more ferocious. I admit, the punch you just made, it really hurts me, but you are done here, in this world, the winner is always king. The marines around saw that Menka was hit hard by Qin Ming and could still stand up, but no one cheered, and his expression became ugly instead. Since that's the case, I'll give you another punch, so that you can understand who is the loser. Qin Ming chuckled, swayed his body, gasped for breath, his body was exhausted to the extreme, he really reached his limit. Shut up. Meng Ka's eyes widened with anger, and his eye sockets burst. He raised up the huge axe in his right arm, and slashed at Qin Ming in front of him. At this moment, a beautiful figure rushed over quickly and threw Qin Ming to the ground, allowing Qin Ming to escape. Menka made an empty cut, and saw a beautiful girl with short orange hair throwing Qin Ming aside, he sneered, it's you, a woman, it's okay if you hide well, you even ran out specially sent to death. Nami ignored Menka. Seeing that Qin Ming seemed to have fallen into a coma, she hastily and rudely slapped Qin Ming a few times, wake me up. Clap clap, whoever hit me, even hit me in the face, what kind of mentality, are you jealous that I'm handsome? 
Qin Ming quickly regained consciousness, only feeling dizzy, his face was burning with pain, and before he opened his eyes, he smelled a slightly familiar fragrance of hair. Nami, is it Nami? What are you doing here? Stupid, who told you to work so hard? Don't you know that I will worry about you? Seeing that Qin Ming's consciousness is still vague, Nami might want to slap Qin Ming again. Qin Ming's heart jumped when he heard Nami's words. For some reason, his strength recovered a lot, and the severe pain from behind his back also eased a lot. He opened his eyes suddenly, and saw Nami slapped her back. Your sister, if you still hit me, if you hit me again, I will really be a pig. Qin Ming grasped Nami's hand tightly, and felt that his hand was slippery, as if he had touched some smooth and smooth white jade. Ah, why is this girl's skin so good? Qin Ming saw Nami biting his lip tightly and staring at him blankly, his originally bright eyes were filled with tears. A drop of clear tears slowly slid down her jade smooth face, and finally landed on Qin Ming's face. Qin Ming couldn't tell whether the tears falling on his face were warm or cold, but there was one thing he was sure of. When he saw Nami's tears, his heart twitched for some reason, but it also feels warm. Qin Ming naturally reached out his hand to wipe away the tears from the corners of Nami's eyes, and when he was about to say something, he saw Menka holding up a giant axe and slashing at him and Nami. Numbness, lousy, when I was experiencing a good feeling, you ran over to destroy the atmosphere, I won't beat you, am I still human? Qin Ming hurriedly pushed Nami away, but in this case, he would have no time to avoid Menka's giant axe. When Menka's huge axe was about to hit Qin Ming, it stopped abruptly. Using his feet, he actually caught the colonel's giant axe with his feet. Marine nearby saw Qin Ming who was lying on the ground tightly clamping the big axe that Menka had struck with his two feet, making Menka unable to move and instantly petrified. Even Zoro looked at Qin Ming with his mouth slightly open, unable to say anything for a moment. Nami, who was next to Qin Ming, thought he was going to die just now, but when he saw Menka strike him with an axe, his heart almost didn't jump out of fright. Get out of here! Qin Ming clamped the giant axe on Menka's right arm with both feet, threw it to the right, and threw him out. Tragically, Manka was thrown to the ground again, and the dust was flying again. Is he immortal? Judging by his appearance at that time, it is obvious that he is almost unable to hold on. Maybe it's his trick to make us think he's dead. It's really cunning. Yeah, fortunately we didn't go up to attack him, and Colonel Manka fell for him. The marines around saw Chin Ming clamping Menka's giant axe with his feet, and easily threw Menka out, all of them felt fear. However, when these marines said that Menka had followed Chin Ming's way, their tone was gloating, which showed how dissatisfied they were with Menka, an arrogant and cruel boss. Didn't you look like you were dying of injuries just now? Why did you suddenly become alive and well? You couldn't be pretending to be dead and deliberately lied to me, right? Nami recovered from the shock, and pretended to wipe away the tears from the corners of her eyes inadvertently. She saw that Qin Ming threw Menka out so easily, which was completely different from the previous performance, so she couldn't help but wondered. Seeing that the wound on Qin Ming's back had stopped bleeding, Nami felt relieved, and while wiping away tears just now, she secretly smiled, but no one noticed. I'm fine, I'm idle, and I won't deliberately pretend to be dead to lie to your tears. Qin Ming shook his hands and loosened his muscles and bones a few times. He was also very surprised that suddenly, not only did his physical strength recover a lot, but even his back injury seemed to have eased a lot and the strength seems to have become stronger, which made Qin Ming even more puzzled. He knew very well that if he was the same as he was a few minutes ago, he would have no way to clamp the giant axe that Menka slammed with all his strength with his feet. Although it was a bit difficult, he did it a moment ago, blocking Menka's full blow with his feet alone. Could this be the power of devil fruit? A flash of lightning flashed in Qin Ming's mind. I was indeed at my limit and was on the verge of dying. But when I heard Nami say that he was very worried about me, I felt like an electric current was flowing through my whole body, and I felt numb. Recovered 7788. When he was about to die, he recovered in an instant, and his strength was improved. Qin Ming stroked his chin, looking like he was thinking hard, and Nami, who wanted to talk to him, didn't want to disturb him. The surrounding marines didn't have Menka's order, and they just surrounded Qin Ming and Nami, and none of them dared to attack. Nami, 
who had been keeping an eye on Qin Ming secretly, suddenly heard Qin Ming whispering to himself, resurrected from the brink of death, the strength will increase. In this case, don't I look like a Saiyan? Quote. Saiyan. Is Saiyan your hometown? But in East Blue, I have never heard of a Saiyan village. Aren't you from East Blue? Nami asked Qin Ming curiously, and what she said made Qin Ming embarrassed immediately. Your sister, if I'm really a Saiyan, I can kill Manka with just one breath, so I don't need to fight so hard. Qin Ming looked at Nami speechlessly, his heart was torn for a while, he saw that there were faint traces of tears on Nami's snow white and smooth face, and remembering that Nami shed tears because of worrying about him before, he couldn't be bothered to tease Nami. When those marines heard Nami's words, they looked at Qin Ming and thought in their hearts, what kind of village is this village called Saiyan? It's really scary that such a monster has emerged. If you want to apply to be transferred to another branch in the future, you must first inquire carefully whether there is a Saiya village near that branch, and if so, you will not go there. Qin Ming was about to explain to Nami what a Saiyan is, when he heard Menka's voice, you two are still in the mood to chat there, today is really a shameful day for me, Menka. Menka slowly walked towards Qin Ming. He was thrown out by Qin Ming with his feet not long ago. Although he seemed to have fallen badly, he didn't hurt his muscles and bones. His eyes were red, staring at Qin Ming, those marines ordered, I'll listen to the order, and follow me to kill these two villains who dare to offend my supreme authority. Following Menka's order, the marines surrounding Qin Ming and Nami attacked them again, and Menka also raised the huge axe in his right arm, rushing towards Qin Ming, and the scene suddenly became chaotic. Facing those marines who were attacking like a tide, Qin Ming didn't have the mood to talk nonsense with Nami. With a left punch and another kick, he beat the marines who surrounded him to pieces. With marine interfering at the side, when Qin Ming and Menka fought, he really couldn't relax with bare hands. Your skills are quite flexible, but your strength is insufficient. You are doomed to be defeated by me. Menka blocked Qin Ming's fist with the huge axe on his right arm, and when he spoke, he swung his left fist violently towards Qin Ming. Qin Ming hastily crossed his arms in front of his chest, resisting Menka's fierce blow. Are you okay? Seeing Qin Ming being punched by Menka, Nami, who was dodging left and right, took a few steps back and asked anxiously. I'm fine, his weak fist just tickled me. Qin Ming chuckled, he said it easily, but in his heart he wailed. His ganma, why Luffy could knock down Menka with three punches and two kicks, and I punched him hard with all my strength, he can still stand up and trouble me. In fact, Qin Ming also knows in his heart that his current strength is indeed far behind Luffy, just like the last time he beat up the fat female pirate Alvida, he knew that Luffy was much stronger than him in terms of strength alone. But what Qin Ming didn't know was that Menka was also yelling at him in his heart at this time. This kid is like those little strong people who can't be trampled to death. He can survive no matter how hard he is beaten. It is really disgusting. Paralyzed, if I had a weapon handy, I would definitely beat them out of Shang. Qin Ming thought so, he dodged Menka's attack, but he couldn't counterattack, because the nearby marines all raised their sabers to attack him so he had to choose to dodge, otherwise, he would be cut in minutes into a ragu. Even though Qin Ming felt that his strength had become stronger after recovering from the serious injury this time, it was still a bit difficult for him to face the siege of the red-eyed Menka and Marine at the same time. It's not that the fighting power of Menka who went berserk sword, but that while Qin Ming was dealing with Marine and Menka, he also had to take care of Nami, who had a low fighting ability. If he was the only one, he would be able to take the absolute initiative. Things won't be like this anymore. The current Menka had already exerted all his strength. He was severely beaten by Qin Ming before, and he suffered a great loss. How could he dare to underestimate Qin Ming? Therefore, this time he led the marine to besiege Qin Ming, Meng Ka did not dare to be careless at all, and with Nami, Qin Ming could not concentrate all his energy on attacking him, and he and Qin Ming fought evenly. Stay away from me. Nami took out the three-section long stick tied to his left leg, and beat Marine who was attacking him to the ground with one stick. Seeing the long stick in Nami's hand, Qin Ming had a flash of inspiration and thought of a good idea. He fainted and forced Menka back, and shouted to Nami, give me your weapon. Well, Nami was stunned for a moment when he heard Qin Ming's words, and then threw the long stick in his hand towards Qin Ming, do you know stick skills? 
I really can't see that you know so much. After saying this, Nami suddenly remembered that if I gave him my weapon, wouldn't I be unarmed? What's wrong with me, why should I listen to him like this? Thinking of this, after Nami narrowly escaped a marine's attack, he immediately turned black and said to Qin Ming very rudely, Idiot, give me back my weapon quickly, do you want to kill me? I made a mistake, you woman can turn your face faster than turning a book. Qin Ming dismantled the three-section long stick that Nami gave him and divided it into three short sticks, and then he threw one of the short sticks, which was nearly 30 centimeters long, back to Nami, use this first. Quote. Nami took the short stick thrown back by Qin Ming, almost petrified on the spot, her pretty face sank, and she yelled at Qin Ming, you idiot, what do you want me to do with such a short stick? If it weren't for the marine besieging her, Nami might have used violence against Qin Ming. Aren't you very good at cudgel? It doesn't matter if you just use it. Qin Ming tripped the marines in front of him, and took off their military shoes quickly while they were on their backs, and pulled out the laces from the shoes. Use it soon. Nami looked at the short stick about 30 centimeters long in her hand, and then at the sharp sabers more than one meter long in Marine's hand. She used to be a snow white beauty, but now her face was as black as charcoal, which was daunting. Don't worry, I will definitely protect you. Give me a little more time, and I'll fix it soon. After avoiding the attacks of Menka and Marine several times in a row, Qin Ming picked up a saber and poked a few times at the two wooden sticks in his hand. At first, Nami's face softened a little when she heard Qin Ming say that she would protect her, but then she saw Qin Ming stabbing a wooden stick with a knife, thinking that Qin Ming was destroying her weapon, for some reason, she felt extremely annoyed, and was about to open her mouth, and saw four or five marines surrounding her, raising their knives and slashing at her. Nami instinctively raised the stick in her hand to block it, and then she remembered that the stick in her hand was only one third of the usual length, how could it be protected? It's over, I'm going to die. Seeing that he was about to be slashed by several sabers, at this moment, Nami unconsciously looked at Qin Ming, thinking in his heart, You are a big fool, but you really killed me, what should the people in my hometown do? Just when Nami was in despair, a figure flashed by, hugged her waist, and quickly turned around a few times, and then she vaguely saw those marines who were beating her with knives being knocked into the air with a stick that could bend. There were bursts of screams. Well, this girl's waist is really thin. Qin Ming put his arms around Nami's waist, turned around on the ground a few times, and finally rescued Nami in time with the weapon he made in his hand. Why does my stick bend? At this moment, Nami has not recovered from the scene he saw just now, with a shocked look on his face. On the other hand, Qin Ming held the demented Nami in one hand, and brandished the weapon in his hand with the other, beating those marines to pieces, screaming again and again, retreating steadily. Colonel, he uses that strange weapon, we are not opponents. A marine who had been swollen into a pig's head after getting more than a dozen sticks from Qin Ming on his face ran up to Menka. As soon as he finished speaking, he was kicked to death by Menka, you who disturb the morale of the army I don't need your subordinates. Menka walked towards Qin Ming, and he saw that the weapon Qin Ming was holding was two sticks connected by a rope, which looked ordinary, do you think you can defeat me with such a ridiculous weapon? Ridiculous. With a flick of his right hand, Qin Ming knocked the three marines who were attacking to the ground with the nunchaku in his hand, looked at Menka, raised the corner of his mouth, wiped his nose, shook his index finger at Menka, and then turned to Menka. Ka made a gesture with his thumbs down, then turned his palm upwards, and waved towards Manka, since you look down on it, I'll let you try it, it's amazing. That's right, what Qin Ming is holding now is a nunchaku made out of Nami's stick, and he uses it with ease, in a word, it's a great hit. Seeing that Qin Ming was waving at him like a dog and making provocative gestures, Menka was so angry that his eye sockets burst and he rushed towards Qin Ming. How dare you look down on me like this, I'm the most in Marine excellent colonel, the best of the best, Colonel Marine, Monka the axe is me. Although I don't know if you pretended to be seriously injured before, but I must execute you here today, as well as the pirate hunter Noah Zoro, the brat wearing the straw hat, and this woman who is with you, I will execute them all. Let them die without a place to bury them. Meng Ka's eyes were sharp, his forehead was full of veins, and he was extremely angry. He raised the giant axe in his right arm and chopped at Qin Ming. You dare to touch them. You are courting death. 
Qin Ming was also angered by Menka's words. He dodged sideways, dodged Menka's axe strike, and swung the nunchaku in his right hand, bypassing the giant axe that Menka used to resist his attack. Ruthlessly it hit Menka's face fiercely, causing Menka to let out a miserable cry on the spot. Wow! Qin Ming threw a stick at Menka's face again, and even Menka, who had been hit twice by the heavy stick, felt a little dizzy, and his defensive movements became sluggish. Yeah, Qin Ming unceremoniously waved the nunchaku in his hand, one stick to the left, one stick to the right, and beat Menka until his nose was bruised and his face was swollen. Zoro, who was tied to the round wooden stake, stared blankly at Qin Ming, he is quite powerful with that kind of weapon. That Colonel Monka has no power to parry. Kebi pushed his thick eyes lightly. He saw with his own eyes the whole process from when Qin Ming gradually fell into a disadvantage at the beginning to now when he made a complete comeback. Stop. Just when Qin Ming was beating Colonel Menka fiercely, a voice that was not very loud and even trembling came into his ears. I told you to stop, did you hear that? It was this voice again, Qin Ming gave Menka another stick, and after beating him down to the ground, he finally stopped attacking temporarily. At this moment, Menka's face was swollen and changed beyond recognition from Qin Ming's beating. Even his son who told Qin Ming to stop just now, that is, Bel Maibo, almost couldn't recognize him. Dad, are you okay? Bel Maibo trembled slightly. He pointed a pistol at Zoro and Kebi, and ordered a dozen marine soldiers to point their guns at Nami, threatening Qin Ming, if you dare to move again, your my friend's life will be lost, step back and stay away from my dad. I was so sloppy about him, I was so focused on beating up Monka, I didn't even notice when this guy came out. Qin Ming frowned, he couldn't figure out why Bell and Meber came out, but Luffy didn't see a single one. He he he, as expected of my good son. When Menka said this, he spit out a few bloody teeth from his mouth, and his eyes were swollen badly, and he could only squint to see things. He slowly sat up from the ground, and said to Qin Ming, Take your hands throw away your weapon and stand in a row with that woman, if you don't listen to me, you will bear the consequences. Qin Ming glanced at the marines who pointed their guns at Zoro, Kebi and Nami, and he quickly threw the nunchaku in his hand to the ground. I see, this is your trump card, what if it's not my opponents, without the help of your stupid son, you will also call them out, and then let me surrender obediently. I'm not your opponent, how could I not be your opponent? Meng Kachiang stood up on his own, and roared at Qin Ming. I lost my weapon, but you still dare not approach me, you are really a coward. Qin Ming's words completely angered Menka. He divided his marines into three teams, two of which stood on both sides, and pointed their guns at Nami and Zoro. In this way, even if Qin Ming wanted to save people, he couldn't save people on both sides at the same time. As for the remaining team, they aimed at Qin Ming's direction. Boy, if you dare to act recklessly, they will die. Monka's swollen and ugly mouth let out an ugly sneer, and ordered the third gun team. You have to give me the aiming point, don't kill him, shoot at his limbs gun, I want to greet him well. Wait a moment. Nami, who was 10 meters away to Qin Ming's left, suddenly called out. What do you want, do you want to go to hell quickly? Nami was frightened by Meng Ka's appearance, which was neither human nor ghostly. She secretly glanced at Qin Ming, seeing that the boy's face was ugly, but he had no fear. An unspeakable feeling rose in his heart. No, I just have a sudden stomachache, can I go to the bathroom? As soon as Nami said this, the audience petrified, and Qin Ming felt that the whole person was in a mess. This woman is messing around, and she is looking for excuses and looking for something decent. Don't you guys want to execute me? Then I'll be the guide. Shoot me. Just as Monka was about to open his mouth to ask Nami, he heard Zoro's voice. Noah Zoro, you are now an important tool for me to subdue that kid, don't worry, once I finish that kid, it will be your turn soon. Menka raised his right hand high and ordered to Marine who was aiming at Qin Ming, get ready. Looking at the dark muzzles aimed at him, Qin Ming held his breath, but his heart was never calm. I've tried my best, it's really a short trip. When Qin Ming thought about it, Menka gave the order. Fire. Bang bang bang. When Qin Ming was about to close his eyes and wait to die, he saw a figure jumping up in front of him, blocking all the bullets for him. We. Qin Ming looked at the person in front of him who was helping him block the bullets. 
After his body was shot by the bullets, the bullets did not penetrate his body, but produced many spikes from his body. One of the spikes growing from his back even touched Qin Ming's nose behind him. Qin Ming could even feel the residual heat of the bullet on the tip of the spike. Looking at Luffy's back, Qin Ming couldn't contain his excitement and excitement. He thought he was about to die, but was suddenly rescued. This feeling of escaping from death made his whole blood seem to boil, and his heart was boiling hot. Of oh. Wearing a straw hat, Menka looked at the boy in front of him with a gloomy face, and gritted his teeth. It's you. Seeing that Luffy was standing in front of Qin Ming, Zoro let out an exclamation. Mr. Luffy. Kebi screamed even more, and the marines who shot were stunned when they saw Luffy appearing out of nowhere. Isn't this the evil spirit? Nami really said what was in her heart. Useless. Following Luffy's energetic cry, all the bullets bounced back under Monka's stunned gaze. When the marines and Monka were stunned by Luffy's ability to bounce bullets, Qin Ming shouted, Luffy. Um, Luffy responded succinctly. Then Qin Ming quickly picked up the nunchaku lying quietly on the ground with his feet, and threw the nunchaku towards the marine who was aiming at Nami with a gun. At the same moment, Luffy also stretched out his feet, and swept towards the marine who aimed his gun at Zoro's side, rubber whip. When Luffy kicked away all the marines on the right who aimed their guns at Zoro, the nunchaku thrown by Qin Ming also pointed the left side at the guns in Nami's marine's hands, and smashed them in a straight line, smashing all the guns it was a mess. No way, who told those marines to stand in a row and still stand so neatly, which happened to be convenient for Qin Ming to start. In a short while, with the tacit cooperation between Qin Ming and Luffy, the crisis between Nami and Zoro was successfully resolved. Thanks for watching, please subscribe and support my channel.